They know the magnitude of this football game. Two incredible programs competing at the beginning of the season. What more could you ask for? They can't take our toughness away from us. They can't take our pride. It's going fast, going. The whole nation's going to be watching. Longhorn Nation, we're back. Welcome to Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo. Tonight in Austin, the temperature has been soaring. So, too, have the emotions and the anticipation as number six LSU comes rolling in to take on ninth-ranked Texas. These two don't play very often, haven't played in nearly 17 years, but they share enough old high school battles. They share a border recruiting territory that, well, things got a little animated in pregame. A lot of jawing, a lot of smack talk. I don't think that they were applauding the fact that LSU still thinks they're DBU. Caleb on chase on, though, goes over and helps himself to some of Texas water on the sideline. I don't I don't think that was a peace offering from the Longhorns, no, necessarily. I, I don't think so either. <laughs> I think that chippiness has everything to do with Texas claiming DBU. Yeah. LSU takes exception to who has the best defensive backs in college football. Reese Davis and Kirk Herbstreit here. Chris Fowler covering the U.S. Open. And we haven't had the major upset in college football yet this season, but almost. We did in the big house. Yeah, Army gave Michigan all they could handle. Really outplayed them, but Michigan found a way to win the game. I think the game maybe that stands out to me is what Colorado did. Colorado yeah. and Nebraska. Colorado looked like they were down and out. Mel Tucker, the new head coach, first year, comes over from Georgia, teaching his team about fight. They came all the, back, all the way back to win in overtime. Says all, a lot about CU, and all of a sudden we take a peek at them in the Pac-12. That's one that was a little testy as well, yeah. leading up to it with Nebraska and Colorado being old rivals. Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger has been anticipating this game. He was born to lead the Longhorns, almost from out of the womb. He was flashing that hook em horn sign, and just as he idolized Texas players, now he is the one that they watch. Well, last year, we saw him kind of break onto the scene and become a dominant performer at quarterback for this, for this school, and you're right. He grew up in this area, went to Westlake, same school as Nick Foles and Drew Brees, and watched guys like Colt McCoy and, and Vince Young, and now he wears this, this jersey. And who better than to try to bring Texas back to being a national National contender with a win tonight and a guy like Sam Ellinger and he looks across the way and the quarterback for LSU seems a lot like Sam Ellinger to me and watching him will be Joe Burrow's uh -oh. dad, Jim the longtime defensive coach uh, he's you know what that's not going to help him get better seats Jimmy's seats are way up in the corner he's new at this he's been a <laughs> defensive coordinator in fact he hasn't done this for 50 years he told he told Joe not being out and coaching but Joe is fired up another guy who had some experience last year transferred from Ohio State has a new offense that we'll talk more about. He's very excited to have a chance to see where that offense is, back in the shotgun, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Both very smart football guys who love the chess match going against the defensive quarterback for Joe Burrow and Sam Ellinger. It's been more than half a century since these two met in the regular season. We're about to get it on in Austin tonight. The Nissan Free Game Rush is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Closing in on kickoff here in Austin, Texas and LSU, a top 10 showdown on Saturday night. 
Kickoff temperature expected to be right at triple digits, and this has not uh, discouraged the fans in the least, even starting with college game day early this morning. Look, we're going to uh, see LSU, and they're going to look familiar in those uniforms and the helmets that we know so well, but what they do on offense is not going to look like LSU. That we No, know. no, we're fired up to watch this. Steve, Steve Insminger is the offensive coordinator. He still calls the plays for LSU tonight. He'll be upstairs. What's different is Joe Brady comes over from the New Orleans Saints. He was obviously learning a lot from, from Sean Payton, Drew Brees, but before that, Joe Moorhead at Penn State. He's only 29 years old, but he brings a very diverse attack, and he has a veteran quarterback in, in Joe Burrows. Biggest thing you're going to see is they're going to be a shotgun, and look at the receivers. Last time you watched LSU, where well, they have five receivers out, where they're trying to get their athletes in space, trying to make plays. The run-pass option, you see top right RPO game. So Joe is going to read the safeties on plays, especially in the red zone. That safety gets a little greedy, gets down, wants to make a play. They'll go right behind him, have a chance to hit one-on-one -on -one. Why, with their receivers against the Texas defensive backs. And as we said, LSU in the past, for years, going all the way back to the national championship against Alabama, they've won games with defense, special teams, not losing on offense. Tonight, they're going to start this new offense of getting their athletes in space and trying to attack as an offense. Can't wait to see how they do on the road tonight against Texas. They had 14 different receivers catch passes last week, and you see Texas, who runs a very similar style offense, touching the horns and getting ready to come out in front of this raucous crowd. This environment for game day is much different than what we've experienced in the past. Sam Ellinger is the undisputed leader of this football team. He gets on players on both sides in practice, demands that they adhere to the standard, the culture that Tom Herman has set. They use words like committed and compelled to make sure that each is holding each other accountable so they can get Texas back to that championship standard. The big flags are coming out. Anticipation starting to build. Video board. And Burt Orange is standing in the tunnel. Eyes set for this showdown with LSU. Something you haven't seen in the regular season since 1954. Long standing grudge. LSU feels that Texas kept them out of a Cotton Bowl bid and a national championship shot about 50 years ago. They've been mad at each other ever since. Played in one bowl game since then. And tonight they will renew acquaintance as the first of a home and home. There is Joe Burrow, Grant Delpit, number seven, the sensational defensive back. And the fireworks have started, and Sam Ellinger is leading his ball club out onto the field here at DKR Texas Memorial Stadium for this highlight game for this college football Saturday. This has been the Nissan pregame rush kickoff from Austin between Texas and LSU is coming up next and now and look inside Nissan's Heisman House. You're watching a presentation of the Big 12 on ESPN. Just finished the coin toss here in Austin. LSU won and deferred. Texas will get it first. Well, here's the good news, Kirk. It's not quite 100. <laughs> there is some humidity. Wind swirling down on the field a little bit. It did reach 100 again today. Both of these teams experienced that in camp. Uh, Texas had almost three weeks worth of 100-degree weather, and certainly it, was, it wasn't cool in Baton Rouge for Joe Burrow and the fellas either. Yeah, I think it could be hot for you and I and the fans, but I think these players are conditioned game already is in shade so I don't think the heat will be a factor and besides Caleb on chase on's already found where Texas keeps its water in the pregame LSU kickoff team taking the field Texas return guys Deshaun Jameson and Devin Duvernay are back Getting set to kick it away is Avery Atkins for LSU. He had 10 kickoffs this year and got a pretty strong leg. Kickoff specialist for the Tigers. You look at Tom Herman. And we are underway in Austin. 
Atkins will drive that thing right out of the back of the end zone. And we'll start on the 25 and to introduce us to the Texas quarterback. Here is Jenna Ellinger. And starting at quarterback for the Texas Longhorns, number 11, my son, Sam Ellinger. There is Sam. We had a sensational season last year, 25 touchdown passes, 16 touchdown runs. That was a record for touchdowns on the ground by a Longhorn quarterback. Yeah, one of the great leaders. In fact, we're going to get a look at two great leaders uh, at quarterback for both of these teams. First snap from scrimmage. Ellinger sets up the screen, and it is Ingram who's got some running room along the left side. He'll pick up the first down and get things started for the Horns. Yeah, just a great call here early. A lot of energy in the stadium. You can feel this LSU defense is out to make a statement, try to intimidate this Texas offense. Really good call by Tom Herman and Tim Beck to take advantage of that energy, get him out of position, and then come back with a screen to try to slow them down, take advantage of that aggressive nature. 19 yards on first down. You'll see more quarterback run tonight. Allinger, a tough runner, gets into LSU territory. And a great pickup on first down of seven, maybe eight. Texas only really has one truly healthy running back in Keontae Ingram. So you're going to see a little bit more of Ellinger running tonight. Yeah, and Ellinger in the bigger games runs a lot. You know, he's going to run by scrambling and creating, but a lot of, a lot of called runs. That's just a quarterback counter. He's running that all the way, following the right guard and the right tackle around that left side for nice yards there on first and ten. Second and two, Ellinger with a down to play with, takes a shot deep, and he overthrows Brennan Eagles, who had a big opening night with a couple of touchdowns against Louisiana Tech. Harry Benson on the coverage, but left a great pickup on first down. They can afford to take a shot. Yeah, absolutely, and it's they're trying to create matchups with this offense, trying to give you multiple receivers, trying to get a safety matched up against one of these faster wide receivers, and Eagles can fly. That time matched up against a safety. It's a great matchup for Tech. And now the first third down of the night, third and two, and Ingram makes his second catch, and it just a tremendous open field tackle by Grant Delp at the All-America. Yeah, this, this, you could make an argument that Grant Delp, Delp it, is as good as any player in the country. Look about, as a safety, he is fired up. He's talking about leadership. He'll come up, he's known for his ability and range downfield, but this gives you an idea what he can do coming up in run support. Open field tackle, as good as you will see from a safety. So Ryan Buchevsky is lined up in punt formation for Texas. The freshman, Derek Stingley, is back. Stingley signals for the fair catch, lets it go over his head, and Buchevsky deadens it nicely just inside the 10-yard line. So LSU now has the ball, long field in front of them, and let's meet the Bayou Bengal quarterback. Starting at quarterback for the LSU Tigers is my son, number nine, Joe Burrow. Go Tigers. And there is Jimmy Burrow for a long time, a defensive coach. Played at Nebraska, has been with Frank Solich at Ohio U for a number of years, but wanted to step away from coaching and watch his son play. And boy, did Joe have a great week last week. Five touchdowns, only four incompletions in the debut of this new offense. They'll keep it on the ground. And a pickup of a couple for Clyde edwards Hilaire as we take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A Impact players. LSU's going to have to make plays on the perimeter. Need big-time playmakers. Chase, number one, maybe the most talented receivers. Thaddeus Moss, the tight end, and son to Brandy Moss, 81, will get involved. You also see us on the defensive side, Osai is an outstanding linebacker who's got to be able to make plays as an inside linebacker but also as a pass rusher. Clyde edwards aware the junior from Baton Rouge at running back now. LSU played five running backs in the opener, and they have confidence in all of them, so they'll keep those running backs fresh. They're also good in the passing game. All caught passes. Joe Burrow can do this, much like Ellinger does, a powerful, tough runner, and gets up to the 20, about a yard short of the first down. We, we told you in the open about LSU with the five receivers out. Texas that time covering them, but a good job of running that time by Burrow. 
Edwards will there and Texas got up there and made a strong hit. And it'll depend on the spot to see how close they got. I think it was Malcolm Roach, the Baton Rouge native, who got in there along with Keandre Coburn. Coburn got a great push up the middle. I think that's really what gave Texas a chance there, but LSU just enough to be able to pick up that first down. Good battle at the line of scrimmage tonight with LSU's offensive line, an area that really focused on trying to get better against this Texas, the size and the athletic ability to Texas D-line and linebackers. Look at this Texas, look at this LSU offense. Empty. Where's the fullback? <laughs> Burrow pulls it down, and Joe will get up to about the 25, pick up of about three or so. See Steve Insminger on the right, offensive coordinator, been around, calls the plays. Joe Brady, the passing game coordinator, came over from the New Orleans Saints, brought a very different approach. Steve Insminger, Coach O, very willing to accept this new approach, obviously, and they've worked very well together in developing this overall offensive scheme that the LSU Tigers are using in 2019. Jamar Chase going out to the left. That puts four receivers out on that side. Burrow buys a little time and completes the pass and hit immediately is Racy McMath, Jalen Green with tight coverage. And, and McMath had to try to work back off of pretty tight coverage by Green. These first couple throws, I think Texas has been hearing all they want to hear this week about Joe Brady and this new offense and five receivers. They, they're paying close attention. They've got everybody dropping, taking away those five receivers, forcing Burrow to run. LSU needs two. Converted a third and short moments ago. Edwards Alaire spins away, has the first down. Clyde Edwards Alaire is finally dragged down just short of the 40 yard line. Jeffrey McCulloch had a shot at him, but Clyde left him in the dust. Watch the left side here, just close this down. Give him the edge. Thaddeus Moss, the tight end, does a nice job. You also see the receiver, Justin Jefferson. LSU going a little tempo here. Al Burrow takes a shot way down the field to the right side. Hey, he's got his man, it's Terrace Marshall. Well, Marshall's the receiver that LSU fans have been waiting and waiting for him to come on and become the, he was the number one ranked wide receiver coming out of high school a couple years ago. And now you're starting to see in his second year the playmaking ability he can especially make downfield, but a great throw by Burrow who was in rhythm and put that right exactly where Marshall wanted it. Picked up 38 and then back to the ground to get right on the cusp of the red zone. It'll be second down. So a lot of the throws in the opener against Georgia Southern close to the line of scrimmage. Sure. And this stretches them out a little bit going deep on that. Yeah, and especially play. the timing of it. A little bit of tempo, trying to catch Texas napping, trying to create a little confusion or doubt with the call coming in from the sidelines from Todd Orlando. They've mixed their tempo up very nicely on this drive. Edward Delaire. Texas closes quickly and then knocking down just inside the 20-yard line. B.J. Foster was the first one there. I think that's the biggest difference I've seen in looking at Texas, and I know it was just one week against an inferior opponent, but the speed at the second and third level. They're breaking in some new faces, but you can see the recruiting efforts of Tom Herman over the last couple of years. There's a lot more speed overall for Todd Orlando as a defensive coordinator to work with. Orlando's a guy who loves to create negative plays, and Texas could use one here. The kind of pressure Orlando dials up. He gets some heat, and Edward Delaire can't hold it. B.J. Foster was right there, McCulloch, and the Texas defense stiffens. Well, they like to go with those bunched formations, kind of condensed formation here to try to create some doubt or confusion. But B.J. Foster sat there, waited, read it the entire time. So even if Edwards Hilaire had a chance to catch that, he's not going anywhere. Uh, this is Cade York, a freshman from McKinney, Texas. He made a couple of field goals for LSU last week against Georgia Southern. Has a chance to break the ice on the scoring from 36 yards out. Back in his home state, and York has the first points of the night for Coach O, and LSU has jumped on top 3-0.
Here in Austin, LSU on top of Texas, 3-0. Maria Taylor working the sidelines for us tonight. That's right, Reese. And I just heard the message to this LSU offense, and it was basically they cannot cover us at the wide receiver position, but we're going to have to stay patient. So they're not happy that they had to settle for that field goal there. But the message that I received from receivers like Justin Jefferson throughout the course of the week is that they love the way the new offense is being run. He said every single day we're watching Saints film. I get to watch wide receivers like Michael Thomas do their job, and it's been so much fun to say that we're running a pro offense in college. Maria, I'm seeing the same thing they're seeing. It's going to be a great battle on the perimeter with those LSU receivers and those young corners from Texas. Henry Atkins with his second touchback of the night as we take a look at the Chick-fil-A impact players on this side of the ball. Uh, Texas, of course, has to have Ingram, the back, stay healthy tonight and, and be able to give them balance. Colin Johnson, big, tall receiver at 6'6". Six, six. When he's left one-on-one, -on -one, he can make plays downfield. Chase on, we talked about him earlier from Houston, fired up for this game. And Grant Delpit has already made his presence felt. The leader on the back end, one of the top players in all of college football. And a great open field tackle earlier. Stop the Texas drive. And now Ingram looking for a little running room in the middle and spins off a couple of tacklers and gets up across the 30-yard line. And Texas has had some early success on first down. For Texas fans watching Ingram, you see that left brace and a bruised knee throughout camp. Tried to rest it as much as he can. They say that he's close to 100%, just continues to wear that brace to give him protection. But he's more physical, a lot faster in his second year in this offense as a sophomore. We touched on it a bit, but they've had a remarkable run of bad luck at the running back position. Freshman quarterback Roshan Johnson is the backup running back tonight. He's really the only other guy they have healthy. Ellinger taking the shot into traffic, and, and they're wanting the flag to come out. That was Kerry Vincent again on the coverage against Devin Duvernay, and we do have a flag back close to the line of scrimmage, and Ellinger's indicating it's on LSU. That looked like maybe a late hit. Ball's a little high here. Remember, me? personal foul. Yeah. Hands to the face, number 90, defense. He actually got into the face of Parker Braun, who is trying to protect the quarterback, and Lawrence is the leader, one of the top players on this SEC de defense, one of the more experienced players, but we know he's physical, but when he gets up high right in front of the referee, that, that's going to be called every time. Lawrence hit for 15 against Parker Braun, who's a graduate transfer offensive lineman from Georgia Tech. They've had to get Parker out of the habit of that four-point stance and the option that he worked with <laughs> under Paul Johnson, but he's a tough, hard-nosed guy playing left guard for the Horns. First down for Texas. Ellinger pulls it down, gets into LSU territory and slides ahead and picks up about five. Uh, I'm just watching the battle because if you if you put a safety in the middle of the field, that's where Texas with Sam Ellinger, he's going to throw the football on the outside to, to Colin Johnson. Up to this point, for the most part, LSU's kept a couple safeties back trying to avoid that matchup. Uh, they just caught LSU's Jacoby Stevens coming on a blitz, and he was... He was almost in Ellinger's pocket by the time the ball was snapped, so he was five yards against LSU. Offside, number three, defense, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, second down. So go from second and six to second and one, and that's Christian Fulton, LSU's, one of LSU's standout cornerbacks. Fulton and Colin Johnson got tangled Crowd's actually reacting, but I don't think this was intentional by Fulton at all. They just ran into each other. You can see they both went down. Fulton taking the, the worst of it, still on the on the ground. LSU medical staff out attending to Christian Fulton. While they do, we'll take a break. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo. This is a commitment to better banking. This is Wells Fargo. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Nissan Heisman House here in Austin this weekend. There's Ricky Williams and Neil Everett. Ricky won the Heisman, Neil did not. Neil is part of that Heisman House family. As you look at the Xfinity Skycam, you can check out our alternate angle Xfinity Skycam coverage of tonight's game 
It is streaming live on the ESPN app. We were just talking earlier about them keeping a couple safeties back, and you can see them back here. That's to protect themselves and trying to avoid that vertical throw by Sam Ellinger. And Maria told us that LSU retaping Fulton's right ankle, and they reach into the bag of tricks, and now Ellinger is going to be a receiver, and Sam Ellinger catches the pass and has a Texas first down. I love the Duvernay, who has great speed, but the ball flying through the air is going to go faster than him running. He had the option to take off. Good job by the lineman not getting downfield. And he just flips it out there to the athletic Ellinger to be able to make a nice play for a first down. Another look to keep LSU honest. Ellinger going up top, and they're going right after, right after Cordell Flott, who replaced Fulton, and Brennan Eagles has it. Yeah, they went after the freshman, Scott. We just kept talking about safeties on the hash to protect. This time, they're not able to do that. Flott is there, but because of the long arms and the ability to to adjust back, Eagles makes a great play on the football, and the young freshman, Flott, gets exposed there early. 28-yard pickup makes it first and goal. Ellinger has it batted down and almost picked off. Rashard Lawrence got a big hand on it. Well, what we're starting to see on that left side is 90's a problem. <laughs> 90 in white is starting to get penetration. And he's not doing it necessarily with quickness, just raw power pushing him back into the backfield. Ellinger, this is what he does in the red zone. The tough runs. Ellinger inside the five and finally knocked down Caleb on chase on among those on the tackle. I'm always amazed when when you watch Ellinger in this area defenses know it's coming but give the Texas offensive line a lot of credit. There was a great surge on that right side pushing the LSU defense back. Ellinger it's like he wants to throw it and now he'll just throw it out of the back of the end zone applying the pressure was chase on. I mean, we keep talking about Ellinger and talking about a comparison and his own coaches talked about it coach O has talked about it but to me the Tim Tebow comparison especially down here uh, is a very fair comparison fourth down and the offense is staying on the field fourth and goal that Cade Brewer in the lineup also Reese Lato tight ends Ingram in the backfield fourth and goal Ellinger to wide open oh, and he dropped it. They had the right play drawn up and Keontae Ingram couldn't haul it in. They had exactly what they wanted. Nobody accounted for Ingram out of the backfield. They went formation into the boundary. The linebackers never accounted for Ingram. He's left all alone. Ball's a little high, but Ingram would tell you he's got to make that catch every time. LSU loses to back out of the backfield, and Texas cannot capitalize. First roll of the dice of the night comes up snake eyes for Ellinger and the Horns. LSU has it from its own three. Missed opportunity for Texas on fourth and goal. Burrow from his end zone taking a deep shot. I wanted to try to get a little space with Justin Jefferson. Texas on that fourth down went uh, tackle over right here with Cosme. You have the H back here as well. Everything tells you QB run. That's what LSU's anticipating, but if they go the other way with the throw back to the tailback who is open, nobody there to account for him. And Ellinger just feels like, oh my gosh, got to shake that off. Don't know that you would call it a bright side, but at least they have LSU backed up for the moment. Edward Delaire is greeted by Malcolm Roach and not much doing. Fired up is Malcolm Roach, Baton Rouge native, leader, captain. They call him the glue of this defense. Look at him just pushing himself around, throwing offensive linemen around. Deck Ulis that time, the right tackle going head-to-head -head with 32. Third and long, inside, deep inside their own territory. LSU's two for three on third down so far. Burrow has it tapped out. Hannah's 
intercepted. Joseph Osai has it, and Texas is set up right back on the doorstep. That's a great effort up front by Texas in the defensive line. McCulloch also does the job of getting his hand on the football to knock it loose. Watch 23 right there. Ball goes up in the air, and the eyes are on the football. Osai makes the play and almost takes it into the end zone. So they call that their cowboy package. They put eight defensive backs on the field, and a nice job of getting a hand on the ball by McCulloch. And, the, and, and just the awareness of that Texas defense on third down and thinking about the football, and Osai comes up with that big interception, and Ellinger and the offense back on the field. Osai had a pick six called back last week. He had another interception that counted, so he's been all over the place, and, man, he has Texas set up now to try to get on the board and atone for the missed opportunity a few plays ago. Ellinger picks up one, maybe two. It'll be second and goal. He told us he dropped 3% body fat yesterday. And I said, you know, we're both looking at him. He looks great. I thought he looked great last year, but he wanted to just get a little quicker. He's got the power. I mean, he's a powerful man in the weight room. But he felt like, you know, a lot of guys, they're, they're trying to tweak something from one year to the next, and that was something he wanted to work on. And But don't underestimate his leg drive and power that he has in this area. Ellinger, counter, going back, looking, straining, touchdown! And he's a 550-pound squat guy, which tells you when he gets into this position right here, he's not going to let up. Oh, they're going to take a yeah. peek at that. Yep. The right knee actually touched about a half at the half yard line it's the progressive pylon cam you see the knee right there before he gets to the end zone definitely going to take a peek at this we have an sec officiating crew david Altman is our replay official before having any body part down this play is now under video review and that is john mcdade our referee tonight and Coach O's defense, we believe, is going to have another opportunity. I think they're going to mark that. And, you know, it, there's a little room there. I mean, it's fairly close to the one-yard yeah. line, it looked like. We'll see exactly where they mark it. And we're talking about that leg drive and that power and how he gets, he hits the collision. He's not going to let up. That's where all that training and work comes in for him following the H back and the, and the tackle and just pushing himself. But it's very clear that the right knee down right there. It's, you know, maybe inside the one, maybe uh, on the half yard line yeah, possibly. He's, he's almost straight up. I think they'll mark it just inside the one where it will be third and goal. Yeah. Dave Kataya telling us it's going to be the half yard line. That's being generous, Dave, if they, uh, if they give him the full half yard there. Dave Kataya, our officiating expert, up here in the booth with us. After further video review, the runner's left knee was down prior to the ball, breaking the goal line plane. The ball he placed at the half-yard line, where it'll be third down. And Dave's right again. They never place it on the three-quarter yard line, do they? No, Dave says actually they do. You know, these last couple <laughs> series, they, they have had four plays inside the eight yard line and not able to come away with any points as of yet LSU is not giving in showing some pretty good fight with them their defense backed up near their own goal line let's see what Texas does remember they tried to trick them the last time they ended up dropping the ball with Ingram third and goal Deontay Ingram denied. And if anything, he lost. And he lost. Well, the football's loose, but the official is coming in. Yeah. I believe they're going to mark it dead. 
Yeah. And a but fourth and goal is coming. This LSU defensive line just submarines Texas. And these goal, short yardage goal line situations, it's about which of the lines gets off the ball quicker. See LSU, see the penetration by them. They get lower and they get off the ball quicker. That allows that next level of linebackers and safeties to be able to submerge the ball carrier. And he lost yards there, or lost maybe a half a yard there. That's Patrick Queen coming in there. So Texas, it's second, fourth, and goal opportunity of the first quarter. Ellinger going right, being chased, not much room, and LSU stops him again. It was Queen and Glenn Logan. Yeah, it, it, but you also have to see before you get to Queen, you got to look at this defensive line. You talked about Logan. Watch the push through here. It allows these guys to scrape with their speed. 97, Reese, you touched, uh, talked, uh, talked about there. Logan, he does a good job of pushing it, and then the linebackers are able to clean it up. So, so many times we've seen Ellinger have success in these red zone situations, but the Bayou Bengals were swarming, and Coach O loves him some defensive line play. Eight, proud plays, of that. eight plays now from the eight-yard line are closer, and no points for Texas. So LSU takes over again inside its own five. They tried a deep shot out of the end zone last time on the first play. Blitz coming, quick pass this time out to Justin Jefferson. Jefferson getting a little breathing room, and it's knocked down just short of the first down. Pick up of nine, Caden Stearns on the stop. That's a, eight plays, eight yards, or eight yard line are closer, and just no points. I like Tom Herman being aggressive. He's at home, he's got this crowd. Why not take those chances? But give LSU all the credit. And you can say whatever you want. He had a drop pass for a touchdown, I get that. But LSU deserves credit. Playing on the road, backs against the wall, playing and showing a lot of fight, especially up front on that defensive line. On the drop touchdown, Kirk, they got him to fourth down, too, so certainly they deserve the credit for it as Edward Delaire is greeted and slips a tackle and gets away from the normally sure tackling Brandon Jones. He picked up some that yards is, across the that is textbook on how to get off a block, a stock block by a wide receiver. Jones, 19, gets off of that attempted block by Jamar Chase. They were locked there for a while. But, man, that, that's the way he worked on it in drills on Tuesday and Wednesday to get off the receiver and make the play. Burrow ducks under the first man on the pressure, but not the second as B.J. Foster gets him down. Tom Herman hired Todd Orlando as his defensive coordinator because he liked how he plays complementary football together. It's the schemes and how they coach together. He is an aggressive coach, believes in confusing quarterbacks and offensive linemen and bringing linebackers and safeties to get after the quarterback. Tigers need six. Burrow steps away from the pressure. He's got plenty of room to pick up the first down and more. And Joe, who's not much of a fan of sliding, will get out to the 35. Yeah, but when you bring all your linebackers and there's nobody there to account for the quarterback, he's going to get to the outside. Everybody's playing man to man. Somebody's got to be there to spy the quarterback. Or because of the speed and the awareness of Burrow, he saw that. He saw the inside blitz and he thought, is anybody going to come with me? Right away, he saw nobody was with him. Easy job, easy uh, to pick up the first down there on third down. That's 16 yards on third and six. And man, oh man, the score's three nothing, but we've had some action here. The end of the first quarter here in Austin. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. The super big Samsung QLED TV is made for football. Sun starting to go down in Austin. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo. I want to go back to something Maria Taylor said. She heard on the sidelines the LSU receivers saying they think they can win on the outside. I, I, it just feels like LSU eventually is going to take another shot. Need to try to stretch this field with Texas leaving their young corners on islands. Texas had a couple of opportunities. 
LSU stopped them on downs and goal to go situation twice. Burrow wanted to take a shot, but he didn't have enough time. B.J. Foster was there to wrap him up. It sure looked like he was thinking about maybe going downfield. He was trying to look for the deep post to his big, tall receiver, Marshall. Just good coverage downfield. You know, he had to just pump one extra time, and by then, you could see the defense from Texas getting into him, led by Foster. A lot of people might be wondering, why is he clapping and then looking over? What he's trying to do with the clap, it's almost like a dummy clap, trying to get Texas to tip their hand for the coaches on the sideline to see the play and then make a call that could maybe work against that coverage. Option look, the pitch to Leonard Fournette, and Fournette is knocked down in the backfield. Jeffrey McCulloch, who's been active early. But McCulloch has been all over the place. We talk about the speed of this defense. Watch them move at that second level. Watch how quickly they're able to get off blocks. It puts a lot of pressure on Sadiq Charles, the left tackle. He's being asked to get up to McCulloch and make that play while he's coming downhill with a lot of speed. That's a tough ask of a left tackle. Charles didn't play in the opener. Suspended or what Ed Ogeron's term. Something handled in-house. He couldn't handle McCulloch on that last play. Third and 18 facing Burrow. Barely got the play off for Nett. Carries it and gets up across the 35. That'll just give him a little bit more room to punt. Yeah, that, and if you think about that, where this drive started, inside, you know, their own five-yard line, they were at least able to flip the field a little bit. And they got 33 yards, and they're all the way out to the 36. I mean, it was starting at their three-yard line. So a couple first downs give, gives them a little breathing room and puts their own defense in a better place. Zach Von Rosenberg, the 28-year-old punter, averaged nearly 52 yards per boot last time and driving it deep to Jake Smith. And Smith, maybe perhaps dangerously for the speedy athletic freshman, scooped that thing up and didn't have far to go. But Texas will have the ball back down 3-0 to LSU. as Texas wants to be able to throw the ball with Ellinger and run with him. They need a night from Keontae Ingram. He's off to a bit of a slow start, drops his short touchdown, not able to really get on track running the ball. Give credit to LSU's defense. That time it was Patrick Queen stop. Again, you can see on the sideline, a little frustrated. Only has a couple, but two carries for about seven yards so far in that drop pass. So a slow start. Long way to go, though. He had a big catch on the opening play, but he's taking a break now in the erstwhile quarterback Rashawn Johnson getting his first carry and showing good running skills as we check in with Maria. Well, Kirk, you mentioned that frustration when Ingram came over to the sideline. He slammed his helmet down and started walking back and forth, and eventually you could see his teammates crowding around him, wide receivers like Brennan Eagles telling him, hey, keep your head in it. At one point, he actually grabbed his head and said, stay in it. Back to Johnson again, and Rashawn Johnson, who started coming in as a quarterback from a run-based offense, and they're really working on overhauling his throwing motion, but he's strong, he understands pass protection, and he's certainly athletic enough to run. And if you're keeping score at home, they've had a number of injuries. He was a quarterback from spring football all the way until two weeks ago. Last time he played running back, fifth grade. So when you're watching him, think about that. Last time he's a running back, it's fifth grade. He's out here playing against LSU after two weeks of practice. Well, the first down picked up by Johnson and Ellinger misfires. He had an open receiver. It was Jake Smith. So, Kirk, you were talking about, and we were talking about the running back depth chart, and this is it. Rashawn Johnson and then Benda, who was moved from linebacker, they are missing Jordan Whittington, a freshman they were very high on, who had a torn adductor muscle, and he'll be out several weeks as he went to Philadelphia specialist Dr. Bill Myers to get that fixed up best in the business, so he'll be good as new once he heals. But, um, you know, in the meantime, the horns aren't deep there. No, Daniel Young, Darian Brown, Jarrett Smith, I mean, they, they, they just cannot stay healthy there. So they've had to move some guys that play other positions, a quarterback and a linebacker to get some depth behind Ingram. Colin Johnson's brother's running back. He's banged up as well. Ellinger throws underneath. He completes it to Eagles, and Brandon Eagles is hit short of the 40-yard line. Takes a big hit there. Michael Divinity was in on the tackle, and it'll be third down. 
the best thing you've seen today. <laughs> <laughs> what a setting here in Austin. A couple years, they'll finish the end zone project. In 2021, it's about as beautiful of a stadium as you'll see in the country. And it is going to be spectacular when they finish. They've overhauled the entire game day experience here in Austin. Texas hasn't converted a third down tonight. This would be a very good time for the people in Burn Orange, and they do. The catch and immediately hit is Cade Brewer, but he got enough for the first down. Jacoby Stevens bringing the lumber, but the chains will move. Yeah, that, that's where as a tight end, you know you're about to get hit. The, the safety knows you're running right to the first down sticks. He gets a running start. Stevens just unloads into Brewer, but he holds on to it. Ellinger taking a deep shot for Johnson. Colin Johnson is out. I think, I think Stingley got it. Oh, did Stingley get it? I, my apologies. You're right. Well, they're discussing things right now. The two officials are talking. And yeah, the ball was as they hit the Royal ground. Field. That's by Texas. First down. Wow. Because, Reese, what I saw is the ball was kind of between the two of them as they hit the ground. And then Stingley, after they hit the ground, took it away. That's the one-on-one -on -one matchup Texas wants. You see a... Well, that's a tough angle there. Yeah, that might be able to see better here. That's a true freshman against a veteran, one of the top receivers in the country. A great matchup. See, that ball is loose when they hit the ground. I don't know. I just don't know if Johnson had possession when he hits the ground. And Stingley just ends up taking it away from him after they go to the ground. Simultaneous possession would go to Texas, but from... The angle we saw a moment ago, that looked more like the Stingley hat. It looked like his hand is in there the entire time. Obviously, the ball's loose there, still loose. Boy, I, there's no way. There's no way that's a, a possession and a catch for Texas, if anything. Incompletion or an interception for LSU and Stingley. And you also have to look here and see if before Stingley got possession, they hit the touch ground. out of bounds, too. Yeah. Does he have it before that foot goes out of bounds? That's, that's the beauty of having Dave Kataya up here <laughs> Because we could just hand it over to him and see what Dave thinks. All right, here's the interesting issue with this. Now, the rule is control with the foot down, but that ball right now is moving, and it hasn't hit the ground yet. Boy, does it hit the ground there? He hasn't yeah. hit the ground yet. Now, okay. watch this. Let's see if it hits After the ground. After review... The incomplete. ball hits the ground prior to possession by either the receiver or the defender. This is an incomplete pass. It'll be second down. Safest call. Yeah. I, said I, either, I thought it was yeah. either an incompletion or an interception. I, I agree. If Johnson that, never really had the ball, did he? No, and if you can let that replay run a little more, I think you'll see that point of the ball hit the ground. So all that <laughs> for second down. It sort of brings me back to the point that I made at the end of the first quarter. All of this... It's three to nothing. Right. <laughs> Colin Johnson is one of the best drop rates in terms of, you know, making every catch he has the opportunity to. And Stingley was the number one cornerback in the country coming out of high school. He has already made his presence felt for this LSU team. And they had a battle, and they'll have a few more tonight. Going to try the other side away from Stingley and Sam's shot for Brennan Ingles is too high and Christian Fulton good to see him back in the game is on the coverage and continue to go look for the one-on-one -on -one matchups the safeties are the key to Sam Ellinger on first and second down chase on turns the corner can't get there and Eagles catches it and keeps his feet Brennan Eagles into the end zone touchdown Texas And that is Texas' first 50-plus yard play from scrimmage since 2017. Think about that. Three straight plays where Ellinger goes downfield attacking the corners, trying to win a one-on-one -on -one battle. Even on third and ten, they went back to it. That is Eagles' 
third touchdown catch of the year. Well, Eagles is 6-4. Johnson is 6-6. I keep talking about the safeties over the top to protect these corners, even though they're talented. Fulton took a chance, a gamble. He tried to undercut it to make a play on the football, and he underestimated where that football was thrown. It got over top of him, an easy catch for Eagles. Walks into the end zone for the Horns. Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo on ABC, is brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Dell, call a small business technology advisor at 877-BY-DELL. And Pacific Life, 150 years strong, protection and retirement solutions for your future. Aerial coverage from Austin tonight is provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who rise above the rest. Goodyear is more driven. Texas just got that 55-yard touchdown pass. Kirk, Sam Ellinger, Tom Herman both said they had to win one-on-one -on -one battles, and That's it. Eagles won one there. Kick will go into the end zone. LSU's first three drives hadn't started to better than their own 11, so they'll be happy to start at their own 25 after that. Next week, Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo, will be in Syracuse, New York. Dabo and number one Clemson go in to take on a team that's really given them trouble, though didn't give Maryland any trouble today. Clemson and Syracuse, 730 Eastern on ABC. Those last two years, that has been a big-time matchup, as you said. Beat him a couple years ago last year, had him on the ropes. And now they get him back at home with the carrier dome. They will need a little atonement after what happened to them. The Terrapins today. Maryland laid it on Syracuse. Clyde Edwards Alaire picking his way and gets maybe four. Right now, Joe Brady on the left, passing game coordinator Steve Insminger, who is the play caller and offensive coordinator, trying to figure out the best way to attack. You see what Joe Burrow will look at from time to time. Like right now, he's looking over to somebody's alive call, a couple dummy calls on the sideline. Burrow down the middle, complete for a first down, is Justin Jefferson on the grab out just across this 45-yard line. Good job of the offensive line, giving him just enough time. You see a blitz that came in late off to his left, but they gave him enough time and a nice vacancy there in the zone to hit Jefferson. Pick up at 17, and Edward Delaire, if McCulloch hadn't been there, had a little running room, a short gain of three, maybe four. Yeah, four verticals, just clearing the, the Texas defense out, and then just trying to create a little bit of room underneath to the back and see if he can make somebody miss. Trying to, try to create space for their athletes. And LSU getting lined up quickly. New tempo-based offense. Burrow leaves it inside, and Edwards Alaire pops out of the crowd. Glides inside the 30 and down close to the 25-yard line, and the Bayou Bengals have something brewing. And you mentioned Charles missed this game yesterday, or last week. Watch him seal underneath and then just do enough. You know, a lot of times you don't even have to necessarily put a guy on his back. Just get in the way of a blitzing linebacker and give your back leverage and a chance to cut underneath you. Pick up to 17 and now 24 on this drive. Leonard Fournette was greeted immediately but fought ahead for one. There's a flag down. And John McDade sorting out. I think we had some people sprinting toward the sideline. Offside. Substitute not able to get on the field on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, Tom Herman's talking about if they're substituting, we need a chance to substitute. He he's, looks like he's telling the official, hey, they substituted. You need to give us a chance to be able to get on the field. The official said no, they did not substitute, and that's why Tom Herman looked like he was frustrated. But I, you know, we showed the coordinators upstairs. One of the things that I'm sensing besides his execution is putting their foot on the accelerator a little bit and getting this Texas defense to drop back a little bit, get them on their heels and the way they're attacking them. Burrow. 
Finds Jefferson again, second time on this drive. Another first down, and LSU has first and goal. And, and, and when you have linebackers that are aggressive, they're coming downhill, and they're getting caught up in crossing routes underneath them, it's creating a nice hole, a little vacancy behind them on crossing routes. Leonard Fournette, the brother of Leonard. A short gain on first down. A couple times we've seen him have time to throw, and he's dumped it underneath to just give those linebackers enough to think about things that could happen in front of them. So now their eyes between the running game and the short passes, they're getting up, and he's, you know, he's looking over to get confirmation on the play call. But he's finding that nice hole there to, to Justin Jefferson a couple times to pick up big chunks of yards. Seventh play of the drive coming on second and goal. Burrow still has it firing, firing into traffic, and it falls to the ground. Brandon Jones almost had a chance to pick it off. Yeah, he's trying to move the safety seven. Stearns with his eyes takes a chance throwing that ball back into coverage, mm. and he's lucky that Brandon Jones, the veteran in the back end of Texas's defense, doesn't come up with a pick. See, he moves seven enough, but 19 he underestimates, and nice job of extending, laying out. Ball's thrown a little behind. Jones almost comes up with a pick. So now this is the end of the field where people have had trouble getting into the end zone. Texas has stopped on downs twice on this end. Right in front of the student section, too. Burrow fires, and it's caught by Justin Jefferson for the touchdown. How fitting. Twice, we just talked about how they're getting the ball to Jefferson behind the linebackers. Why not try it again? Watch the linebackers unaware of what's behind them. Unaware, see that big hole? Third time on this drive, they didn't, they've been able to locate between the linebackers and the safeties. There's a good look at Burrow's eyes. Does what he needs to do. Knows he's eventually coming back. He was trying to move seven just enough. Stearns, and then come back and make the throw to Jefferson, who had enough room to catch the ball and then hold on to brace himself before Stearns hit him. How about Jefferson now with four catches for 44 yards? He was the big play man on that drive, along with the run by Edward Delaire, and LSU answers Texas' big play with a touchdown drive of its own. And Joe Burrow and the Tigers regain the lead at the halfway mark of the second quarter. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like the ones you see here by awarding the Live My Student Section of the Year. Longhorn Student Section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete and get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live My Student Section Contest. What a different atmosphere. We've been coming here for years. They've changed the stadium. New athletic director, new approach to home games. Student section now is general admission, so first come, you know, the first ones here are going to get the best seats, and it's it's a totally different scene here. No block seating. Longhorns will have it on the 25. Uh, Chris Felica, what does Chris Felica have for us? Uh, tonight's halftime trivia question for you, Mr. Davis. I'm going to test your uh, NFL draft knowledge as well since Herb Street. Uh, LSU, of course, has been a staple in the NFL draft, certainly on the uh, defensive and offensive side of the ball. But I want to know who was the last Texas offensive player taken in the first round of the draft. Bear, I'm, I'm going either Roy Williams or Cedric Benson, maybe. Roy Williams? Yeah, Cedric, the late Cedric yeah. Benson would be a good guess. How about, how about, um, how about Vince? Vince Young? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that would be the easy. Yeah, he would be the easy. There's got to be somebody since then, though, right? Yeah, yeah it's a sneaky. Somebody since then. Somebody sneaking around. Yeah. Yeah, Vince Young first overall. Oh, yeah. Wow. Bear, you, you, you were all over the place, but you one of you did ultimately answer that at Sox Athlon Trivia question. It was oh. easy. It was Vince Young. It was, I was thinking that was. It, so, yeah. Sometimes I your apologize. first instinct's the right instinct, but, but it's amazing to think that Vince was the last guy taken. Bear, that's, I mean, that is that is remarkable for the success that they've had. They played for national championship a, a few years after that, and for the 2009 season. But um, yeah, that that's that's almost shocking. It really is. Boy, those are the glory years. Mm. 05. Colt after. McCoy came in after Vince Young. They had a really good seven or 
seven or eight years there with Mac Brown as a head coach recruiting such high caliber athletes but it was all built around Vince Young and Colt McCoy a quarterback and really he hadn't had that type of stability at quarterback until Sam Ellinger yep took the job and really asserted himself last year here is Ellinger on third down Ellinger and the flag comes flying out yeah he, he had the Texas receiver Duvernay is actually tackled this time by Jacob Phillips officials saw that and will call that and give Texas a first down Phillips is a hard hitter but sometimes in holding six defense against an eligible receiver this is a 10 yard penalty for the previous spot with an automatic first down was it that's not always his strong suit is dealing with guys in space no no he, he is a as you say physical linebacker at times does struggle in coverage coming out of high school in the Nashville area actually played on the offense but also a linebacker safety type of guy but uh, when he gets matched up one-on-one -on -one, especially against a quick receiver like Duvernay that, that can be a problem so the penalty gives the horns the first down Ellinger stands in fires into the seam in the middle and he has Duvernay for another Texas first down now the offenses are cranking well, up the last time Texas had a ball they were going downfield now you got a couple high safeties so instead of going out wide now you got to try to go into the middle of the defense picked up 17 Ellinger underneath Ingram has the grab and Phillips closed quickly. So what, just so you know what Sam Ellinger's looking at, and he does this every week, it's not just against LSU. Because they're so good on the outside with their wide receivers, Eagles on one side, Colin Johnson on the other, we've got an injury. You're looking at the two safeties that really dictate the passing game and how Texas wants to try to attack a defense. There's one of those safeties, Grant Delpit. It's Braden Fajoko. The transfer from Texas Tech, who's down on the ground for LSU. And on a hot night, big defensive lineman. will be working on Braden. We're hopeful it is just cramps. LSU with the lead when you come back. Don't forget to check out our Target Command Center coverage of tonight's game. It is streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. You can keep up with the stats, have a lot of different looks at our coverage of LSU and Texas. Texas 143 passing yards, and their, their main target, Colin Johnson, yet to make a play. LSU doing a good job of trying to take away the downfield pass. I keep talking about the safeties, and the reason you see typically two back there is the respect they have for that deep ball on the outside. If you get one on one, that's when you'll see Ellinger take those shots. Rashawn Johnson back into the game at running back, and Rashawn works his way just inside the 40 yard line. It'll bring up third down. I think LSU, they feel confident with their front, with those linebackers and trying to defend the run, keep those two safeties back where you don't have to necessarily get them involved in run support. And you can help with Dave Aranda, you can help with the safeties and taking away the height 6'6 six, six with Colin Johnson. It's tough when you're left one on one against an undersized corner. Texas needs to get it to the 35. LSU almost jumps. No contact. Ellinger standing in. Really good job by Cosmio and Caleb on chase on, but Ellinger took way too long. And he'll be stopped. Jacoby Stevens coming in there. Yeah, nice job. You, you you touched on it. And the left tackle, Cosme, we thought he had his hands full against Chase on, but he is giving, watch on the left side, 52. You're talking about an outstanding pass rusher. He <laughs> looks like he might be holding on to that jersey, but there's nobody open downfield. Nothing that Sam can do except to eat it. And and I'm you know, with his athletic ability and legs, sometimes he'll take off and pick up a first down, unable to. Great defense. But Cameron Dicker out there, career-long 52-yard field goal. Right now, they're lining up like they're going to let him unleash one from 58. See if he does that when you come back. Aerial coverage from Austin tonight is provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear is more driven. There's a fourth down. Right at the 40-yard line, fourth and five, and Texas sent the field goal unit out. I suspect they were trying to catch LSU unaware, and they were going to punt it anyway, but now they send the regular punt team out, 
and Ryan Buchevsky, who's adept at killing the ball inside the 20, forces a lot of fair catches. The dangerous freshman, Derek Stingley, standing at his 10. And Derek's not going to get a chance at that one, and it goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Last time LSU had the football, Joe Burrow had his best drive. Eight plays, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Getting those linebackers coming up aggressive all night. They said, let's take advantage of those aggressive linebackers. Justin Jefferson had a great drive himself. Finding and taking advantage of that hole between those aggressive backers and the safety. And then on third down, the touchdown, where he moves Stearns with his eyes to give his receiver Jefferson a chance. And you can see that line. When they've done their job, they give nine time to throw. Look at the night he's had, eight of nine. Let's see what happens here on this drive here near the end of the first half. He's got freshman running back Ty Davis Price back there, a big load out of Baton Rouge. He picks up the pass rush, and the pass is complete to Jamar Chase for the first down. That, that was a beautiful throw because he anticipates. That ball is out of Joe Burrow's hands before Chase was even close to coming out of the break, and that speaks to the relationship in the second year of Burrow and his receivers. Picked up 13, and Joe goes right back to work. Into the middle, and he's got Marshall. Terrace Marshall is into Texas territory, and the Tigers are finding their rhythm. Uh, it's finding a rhythm, and continue to go into that hole. You know, th those, li those linebackers are going to have to start getting depth, and that's when Burrow can start checking it down underneath and get the backs the ball in space. And the freshman has his first carry, and he had some forward progress and tried to spin away. Malcolm Roach is there to stop it. But Joe Burrow looks like he is in a rhythm and in command right now. This new offense of LSU in 2019. And this isn't just tonight, people watching LSU. The entire SEC West is watching LSU and Joe Burrow taking some notes, scribbling down some notes, saying, hey, uh, you guys watching what's going on in Austin with nine and white? <laughs> He's not too bad. He's not a man to mince words either. I think oh. he referred to it as bringing the offense out of the Stone Age. <laughs> He's right. They used to play not to lose on offense. This is a different mindset. Jones bringing the heat from the outside. Now Burrow's going to throw it to an open chase. And Jamar Chase has it. A first down inside the 25. Condensed formations. You see this in the NFL with the Saints. You see this with the Rams. It affects the defense and their communication. Nobody sees Chase. How many times have you seen Robert Woods of the L.A. Rams run that route and nobody on him? That comes from Joe Brady from the Saints. Quick out. There is Chase again. He's slung out of bounds by Jalen Green. Steve Insminger, the offensive coordinator, calls the plays on the right. Joe Brady came over as the passing game coordinator. He felt that they needed to open things up, give their athletes a better chance. So they went to the Saints and found Joe Brady. Edward Delaire slips the tackle, and he works his way inside the 10, first and goal again for LSU. You notice those linebackers, with everything that's been happening the last couple series, aren't quite as aggressive firing down. Now they've got a lot they're thinking about. They've got to worry about Joe Burrow back there. They've got to worry about the ball being thrown behind them. Just enough to make them hesitate. Gives the running back Edward Delaire enough room to get up there. And the lineman a chance to get up there to block him. On first down, Burrow to the back of the end zone, and Chase can't hold on to it. Just before the snap of the ball, one of the things Texas wanted to do was to try to tire out LSU's defense. But I saw hands on hips from the guys in burn orange in yeah. these last couple of drives. You have your hands on your hips, you start to lose your mental edge and, you, and your, your focus. And when that happens to a defense, you, you can really get tired and can get exposed. Chase beat his man that time for a touchdown green. Burrow put it exactly where he wanted to put it, and Chase not, not able to hold on to it for the touchdown. Burrow sweeping the left side. Edward Delaire out to help him, and Joe is knocked down by Caden Stearns. You know, when you evaluate quarterbacks, I talk about accuracy, decision-making, and toughness. He's the son of a coach. Jim Burrow's his dad, and Joe Burrow plays with that toughness he loved to see. Texas is called a timeout.
Cade York lining up for a 33-yard field goal attempt for LSU, trying to put the Bayou Bengals up by six. And York is true for the second time tonight. He has great lift on those kicks. And he's made a couple of them for Coach O. Another good drive. There's a former defensive line coach smiling at a kicker. One of the rarest things you'll ever see in football. Coach O's team up by a half dozen with a buck 41 left to play here in the first half. Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Got to have it if you're a Big 12 fan. Exclusive home for more than 50 men's basketball games. Hundreds of other Big 12 games, including women's basketball. Original content like the less miles all access shown during college football. You can sign up today at ESPNplus.com. And we've got a who's who, a cavalcade of celebrities here. Jordan Speed, Texas X. There's the Undertaker. Undertaker. He joined us on the Octagon. Yeah, a big, big, big Texas Longhorn fan. There's Mo Bamba. Great center from the Longhorns in basketball and the Minister of Culture, Matthew McConaughey. Changed his hat. Changed his hat from this morning. How about that car he brought in? <laughs> that today, was great. Too, with the Longhorns on two, the front. Two shirt day, two hat day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 141 to go. Texas will have it at the 25-yard line next week. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo will be in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Number one, Clemson coming in to take on the Orange. It's next Saturday at 7.30 on ABC. It's streaming live on the ESPN app. I'll tell you why. Clemson was just methodical today in the way it just squeezed Texas A&M to death. Lawrence went it, 268. It wasn't necessarily a dominant performance, but it, it, it never felt in doubt. Never. Ever. Up for one second. <laughs> well, Texas you, A&M got a touchdown that meant a little something to some late yeah. in the game. You've got a timeout. you got a veteran quarterback and a minute 41. Let's go get in the field goal range. That's what you're thinking, right? And throw that flip out to Ingram, who dances out of bounds to save time. He took advantage of the aggressiveness on the first snap for Texas, but this time LSU was ready for it. See what kind of coverage Dave Aranda Defensive coordinator from from LSU. This is an important series for both these teams. So LSU is taking his crowd out of the game. They're up by six. Would love to get out of here up by six heading into half. And of the Aranda Tom Herman chess match. They were both at Cal Lutheran together. Dave crashed with Tom for a while and all. Oh, Patrick Queen got in there quickly. Nellinger did a great job to get away and then threw it downfield. Queen was in there in a heartbeat, and Ellinger did very well to avoid the sack. Did you see Dave Aranda? Aranda brought the blitz that time right up the middle with Queen, and the center Shackelford, a veteran, just over adjusting a little bit too late. Makes you wonder if miscommunication on the protection call, but nobody accounts for him right up the middle, and Ellinger lucky he was able to even keep that play alive. Third down and nine. Texas used a couple of timeouts for this opportunity, but they don't get a first down here. LSU might get it one more time with some time. Pressure on Ellinger, and down he goes. It's Caleb on Chase on. Well, you, you think of Chase on, you think of him coming from the outside with his speed. But here he lines up. You think about this, but instead it's a stunt back to the inside, and nobody's able to account because of that call by Aranda. Nobody's able to account for one of the best pass rushers in the SEC. They slid towards him, anticipating that outside speed rush, but a great job of being a step ahead by Aranda, bringing him back underneath. Nobody picked him up. Jason missed last year with an ACL injury. Suffered early in the season. He missed a lot of time in camp, too. Second day of camp, he hurt an ankle, but he appears to be the picture of health right now. Great to see him back. Not great for SEC fans outside of Baton Rouge, but when you pull for these guys, it's good to see. He, he had a big game against Miami, as you said, week one, and then the injury. And the punt is going to drive Stingley all the way back inside his 35. Derrick makes a man miss. He's got a little room. He gets across the 40. And Coach O used the timeout wisely. Now Burrow, who's been red hot, has a buck 13 to go to work. Coming up, stay tuned for the Dish Halftime Report. Kevin DeGandhi, Mark Sanchez, Jonathan Vilma, they'll have all the scores and highlights. Busy 
week in college football and I'm sure we'll get us up to date on what's going on with Buffalo and Penn State. Yeah yeah it's always fun to hear those scores. How about Matt Brown knocking him off one coordinator at a time too. Hey, Max got a lead on his former defensive coordinator Manny Diaz. Up 17 three. All right you said Joe Burrow we keep talking about Sam his chance at the end of the half now Joe Burrow definitely a guy in this new offense that's trying to pick up some points. I want to see how Texas tries to defend an offense right now that's gaining some confidence. Joe's hit 10 of his last 12 passes. And make it 11 of 13. How about Jamar Chase? You know, it's just a different rhythm, a different confidence balance out of Joe Burrow. Look at the position. Chase turns around and the ball's right in his face. Everybody was critical last year of Burrow's accuracy. In this offense, that's not a problem. He's accurate again. Jefferson trying to get away from the tackle and he jumps outside the 20. About the fourth time we've seen that same route. Texas giving up the crosser behind the linebacker and Burrow takes it every time. Pick up of 18. Burrow right back at it. Into the end zone. And Jefferson is there. And Burrow with the quick strike. And LSU trying to put this thing in a hammerlock just before the half. Decided to get out of coaching to watch his son play. His mom is there as well. That, my friends, you better be taking notes and watching Joe Burrow. Watch him hitch, step, throw exactly where he wanted that ball to be. Up high and back where Jefferson can adjust. The Texas defender never sees the football. And I tell you, as much as I love watching Burrow, this Justin Jefferson is a big time receiver at LSU. You know what? This is very much based on the New Orleans Saints offense. That's where that's where Brady came from. I'm not going to say he's breezed, but there's another number nine that would be proud of that drive. Like they're checking just to make sure that his elbow got underneath his arm, got underneath the, the ball, and they cleared it. It's a touchdown for the Tigers. I don't think there was ever any doubt about that. Jefferson locked those big mitts on it. Took care of business, and boy, oh boy, Texas missed a couple of opportunities on goal-to-go -go situations early. And here at the end of the half, LSU is starting to carve up that Longhorn defense. And they have a 20 to 7 lead. Coach O, Coach O's feeling it right now. He sure is. This offense was well advertised that Joe Brady came over to kind of help Coach O and Steve Insminger on, you know, let, let's open this offense up. Let, let's take a few more chances. Let's be aggressive. Let's attack. Joe Burrow said this week, we want to be one of the best offenses in the country. And we all thought, oh, that's, that's, that's good. Let's see how they do on the road against Texas. And, you know, it's a half so far, but you got to be really excited to see what we're seeing from Joe Burrow, the rhythm, the balance that he has. Last year, he was under center. It just wasn't a fit. He grew up in this kind of offense, and you can just tell the different level of confidence that he has in this offense. There are many years that LSU, after stopping Texas on that last defensive series, Kirk, would have been perfectly content let that clock wind down, run out, go to the half of the 13-7 oh, yeah. lead. Instead, they call timeout. They get it back, and boom, boom, boom. Now the lead's 13. And see, I, I think that's the thing. It's not just an offensive philosophy. It's a different approach by LSU as a team. It's no longer defense and special teams and avoiding a disaster on offense and being conservative. Now it's what their fans have been waiting for for years opening things up having a quarterback that can attack a secondary and right now the way LSU is attacking that Texas secondary even though they have the lead they can just keep pushing the ball down the field against the Texas defense. Oh, Ellinger is not going to go quietly into the half of Michael Divinity didn't play last week and team in family in house situations back in the lineup and applying pressure to Sam second and ten with 41 seconds left in the half. You know the folks in Tuscaloosa are watching this. What they're saying, what's going on with the LSU offense? It is something foreign to most of the SEC, and man, 
Coach O had a vision of what he wanted on offense. He found the right guy. Steve Insminger has been very gracious in, in allowing Brady to teach them the offense and then implement it. And now Texas keeps it on the ground with Ingram with half a minute to play here in the first half. And Longhorns might need to go in and regroup. Yeah, Texas cannot get the ball thrown downfield at all. You know, their best receiver, Colin Johnson, up to this point, doesn't have a catch. He's 6'6". He catches the ball on everybody that he faces in the Big 12. This is an SEC defense. They wanted to challenge him at the line of scrimmage. They want to put safeties over top of him. First half goes to the LSU secondary. Remember that DBU? Who is it Texas? Is it LSU? After one half, it's LSU. They only gave him 3,000 tickets, and they put them way up in the nosebleeds, but they are making some noise here in Austin as LSU has a 20-7 to lead. That's the end of the first half here at Texas. Halftime report with Kevin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, and Jonathan Vilma is coming up right after these messages. You are trained and built for games like this. You're built for them. Got the Tigers and the Longhorns just going down on the 50-yard line. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo, and this presentation of the Big 12 on ESPN. Texas trailing LSU 20-7 here at halftime. Maria Taylor caught up with Longhorn coach Tom Herman. All right, Coach, what was the overarching message you wanted to deliver to your team at halftime? Well, we're, we're down two scores. Um, uncharacteristically, we played tentative. You know, we, we dropped the pass in the end zone. We had a missed assignment again. You know, the, our goal line offense, not real good right now, but it's a really good football team we're playing. And if, if we play our game, we're, we're going to be just fine. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Tom might be trying to convince himself a little bit with the way LSU's offense got rolling at the end of the first half. Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, and Maria Taylor, who you just heard from back here. LSU's going to get it first here in the second half after really finishing the half strong. Yeah, I mean, Tom Herman, it's not just about his offense. It's about his defense because I, I, I think all of us sense that LSU in the second quarter, they came alive. They really started to execute and look like a different offense, especially Joe Burrow in the passing game. So they've got to make some adjustments and try to get Burrow out of that rhythm. Clyde edwards Delaire makes the fair catch. Joe Burrow will have it on the 25 as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Yeah, and, and it's, you're just kind of tuning in and, and seeing this second half. Talked about Joe Burrow. It was big in the second quarter. He started to find Justin Jefferson making really accurate throws where Jefferson could make adjustments to the football. And Colin Johnson has not been able to make the play downfield. They had shut him down. In fact, he thought that might be a catch. It was overturned. It was not. So he does not have a reception yet tonight, and they cannot consistently have uh, success throwing the football. Kirk, he's got 28 straight games with multiple receptions and now LSU has it back having scored on three straight possessions two of them touchdowns and Burrow stays hot finding Jamar Chase on first down Jalen Green rides him out you know th this is this new offense of LSU and, and now they're on the road we're into the second half and you got a 13 point lead the way they've been able to build that lead is Joe Burrow in the arm and right now until Texas can slow you down in this passing game that, that's that's where I think you keep attacking LSU runs it on second down. Edward Delaire will be a yard or two short at first. Now, with that being said, in the first half, they were 20-20 on run to pass. I mean, they were, you talk about balance, not necessarily the yards, but the looks they're giving Texas, very balanced. Edward Delaire, anyone who had a chance to pick up the first down, but he dropped the pass, and that is huge for the Longhorns to force a three and out. But especially because Burrow... In the second quarter, 11 of 13, 159 yards and two touchdowns. And these last three possessions, he's been doing pretty much what he wants. So they get a stop to start this second half, stop the bleeding, and gives him Ellinger the football back. 
Zach von Rosenberg will punt it to that man Jake Smith who is a Gatorade player of the year in the state of Arizona. Dynamic speedy return man. We'll see if he gets a chance. On Rosenberg drives Smith back inside his 15 where he makes the fair catch. And so Sam Ellinger with Colin Johnson will come out and try to get the Texas offense cranked up. You know, it's, it's really been the exact opposite for Ellinger is they've not been able to do anything here in, in the last uh, last part of that first half. They just off balance not able to get separation with their wide receivers. They told us in meetings yesterday biggest thing we have to do is we've got to win one on one. We've got to beat this talented SEC LSU secondary and in that first half they weren't able to do that very often. Kirk that 52 yard punt pins Ellinger back at his 14 to start Texas first drive of the second half. Deontay Ingram Ingram puts it on the deck and bounced right back to it. <laughs> you know about a, a favorable drop or a favorable bounce back right back to him. I mean, that ball looked like it was going to go out into the open field where LSU's defense would get a chance to make a play on it. Good effort that time by Phillips to knock that football loose. But as I said, it has happened to bounce right back to him. That, that's a member's bounce. <laughs> Rashawn Johnson gets it. Rashawn is, Rashawn's done a really good job for a guy who just moved to running back to quarterback a couple of weeks ago because of the depth issue. Well, he gets the ball, he just hits it. You know, they'd like to actually see him have a little more patience. Keep in mind, he has been a running back since fifth grade. He's a running back right now, and that's a good twist and pickup of about four before Phillips gets him on the turf. Yeah, it's been remarkable to see what Texas has endured with injuries. Tom Herman has had to move some people around. Rashawn Johnson, a quarterback, until two weeks ago. He's a true freshman. His man had to move to running back to give them depth and to give them a kind of a, another back back there besides Ingram. Johnson catches the pass and heads for the edge. Rashawn Johnson. Rear end over T Kettle of around the 35 and close to the first down. If nothing else, you can. I love his energy. You know, he's 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 coming in with a purpose, and he seems to be incredibly fired up just to have the opportunity to be out on the field and play. Uh, you can tell there's a different gear, almost a different level of intensity when he gets his ball or he gets his hands on the ball compared to Ingram. Texas has moved it out from its own 14, picked up a couple of first downs. Ellinger taking the shot. Got to win those one-on-one -on -one battles. And Christian Fulton had really good coverage on Colin Johnson. He got the safety on the hash. Delpit, so he gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Good against good. Who's going to win? Fulton, one of the top corners in the SEC. You see the size advantage. Starts to get his hands around. The ball is way underthrown. And there's no interference at all there. Good job by Fulton to let it go. And, you know, that time it looked like Johnson was able to get downfield, but Sam Ellinger unable to get the ball thrown out in front of him, instead thrown behind. Sam hasn't been quite as accurate always as we've seen in the past, though that one was right on the money to Devin Duvernay and another first down for the Longhorns. And, and so here's that run pass option. He's looking at these linebackers and his safety. When he senses that they're going to come up, he's going to pull it out, throw it right behind them. Good read. In rhythm that time. Puts it into the, the running back stomach. He feels the safety, that hang player he's trying to put in a conflict. Makes a good read and a good throw. to get out of some trouble and now he throws it back and that one was not right on the money to Reese Lado. Reese would have had a lot more running room. He had to stumble out and reach out and get it. Pretty good athletic ability by Ellinger to get away from Phillips. That play is designed the entire time for Lato. Just unable to keep his balance. Sean Johnson has another first down. How about how he finishes his carries? I mean, he, he's, he's, he's trying to get as many yards as he can, and instead of just leaning forward, he's extending himself and flying through the air for another two or three yards. Look at it. Look at that. You can feel it from up here, that intensity. And Tyler Shelvin, the big nose guard, appears to be cramping up. Texas wanted to test the stamina of the LSU guys up front tonight. 
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. The best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. Tyler Shelvin has made his way to the LSU sideline. After going down, there's Tyler. Caught a cramp, perhaps, <laughs> or a signal. <laughs> One of the two. And anyway, see if Texas can keep this momentum going. And Sam Ellinger started. Ellinger firing deep, and he was looking for Colin Johnson. And Derek Stingley, the freshman, was right there. How about Stingley? Highly decorated true freshman, number one ranked corner, five star, all world against a veteran. Gets a little push off, anticipating that push off, comes back to the football and gets his left hand on it. I mean, are you kidding me? It's a true freshman going up against one of the top receivers in the Big 12. Number one cornerback in the country coming out of high school, Rashawn Johnson has it. Grant Delp had hit him, and he gets away. I beg your pardon, that was not Johnson, but Devin Duvernay. Either way, he got away from the normally sure tackling well, Delpit. What, what you see here is you've got a cushion, but watch Delpit. Now give Duvernay a lot of credit. There's the blitz. He sees the blitz from Anthony, and then look how quickly Delpit gets in there. But man, Duvernay, that is hard to do. To get away from Delpit, who gets in there before he can really start to establish your establish yourself and get upfield shakes free from that known for his speed that time he shows you some of his physicality to pull out of that and he's a smaller shiftier guy playing the position that LJ Humphrey played last year in that slot he shows some toughness there and Texas needs six on third down and Ellinger's got it Got his man complete, and it's Ingram out of the backfield with a catch. Michael Divinity on the coverage. Oh, they went empty there. How about the time? Give all the credit to the offensive line. Ingram's going to work himself across. He's actually lined up as a slot receiver. You see him right there. Just a little one-on-one -on -one matchup there, trying to pull away and get away from Divinity, the linebacker. But he had all day to throw. Look at the pocket that that offensive line was able to create on third down. Uh, Divinity, who made the tackle, it looks like he made. They, yeah, stretched his arm there, right arm. Ingram came down on top of it, and his arm was on the ground as he fell on top of him. It's like it was pinned underneath the, Ingram's body. Divinity, the senior linebacker. Let's have a look at him now. And, Let's see it gets under yeah, Ingram. He is up and, and heading over to the sideline with with Devin White, who is just an all-world linebacker last year, moving on to the NFL. We wish him all the best. His LSU defense is left with guys like Divinity and Jacob Phillips and Clark and Queen and others to try to not just make plays like like White, but of course provide the leadership and, and make the calls and get everybody lined up. And Damone Clark's into the game. That is a guy that Aranda and Ogeron are really high on number 35. Checking in. Had a really nice opening game against Georgia Southern last week. He's on the field of that linebacker position as Texas has the first and ten. All right, so he saw a blitz here. Now LSU's getting out of that, and they're bringing the pressure from over here. Well, they, they stayed with it. Ellinger. It is he throws and just couldn't quite get it down and it is Neil Farrell who was applying the pressure. Yeah, they still got to him. They brought the pressure from here. Of course, Chase on has the ability to get to you, but it was the inside pressure where the offensive line not just quite able to hold up long enough. They've been doing a really good job on this drive, but that time the speed and the quickness there, Farrell was able to get in and get that pressure. 72 back in. Ingram takes a couple of big time hits. It'll be third down and long coming up for Texas. The previously mentioned Clark in there. The deeper Texas gets with Tom Herman calling the plays here, the more the pressure has been coming after Sam as they get inside his 30 yard line. That's third down. It's got man to man across the board, safety in the middle, Delpit playing free. He's trying to find the matchup that he wants. Where can he win in a one-on-one -on -one matchup? Last time he went to Ingram, who's over there lined up as a running back, but over here in the slot against the backer. And Divinity is back in the game, and he drops into coverage. 
Ellinger firing to the outside, and it's a first down. Texas and first catch of the night for Colin Johnson. I tell you something, that's big time. This is a big time throw on third down and long. Johnson, but what you can't see is the back shoulder, but watch Sam Ellinger take a hit as he throws the football. Get submarine. That's big time. Gets it out to Duvernay. Duvernay runs through a tackle again. He got away from Delpit again. Second time on this drive. He almost, he almost welcomed him. Said, let's do it. Let's see who's going to win this. It's like a drill in practice. I'm going to lower my shoulder. You're a great player, All-American. You take the hit. I'll take the hit. And, this, and, you know, he's got some lower body strength there. He's able to go over top of him. Another LSU player goes down. I think that's the third player this drive. But it's Divinity for the second time. And... The crowd is reacting because they believe that perhaps uh, LSU is more interested in stopping the Texas momentum, but the medical staff out checking on Michael Divinity. He's a pain. Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo on ABC, is brought to you by General Mills. Bring more to your game day with General Mills tailgate recipes. See what you can create at wearetailgatenation.com. And Old El Paso. Everything goes with Old El Paso. Been anticipating this game all day here in Austin. And a timeout because of Michael Divinity's injury. Headed back to the LSU locker room, presumably to get an IV at second and six. Kirk. Del Pitt here on the hash to protect from the deep ball. Ellinger pulls it down. He's going to run with it. Sam gets up close to the first down marker. And this has been where Texas has struggled tonight. They've run eight plays inside the eight. They haven't scored yet. A designed quarterback draw against the center shackle for out in front of him. They, they w did a good job of waiting to give his center Shackleford a chance to get up to the linebacker, Jacob Phillips, for good yards. Nice patience. Okay, Sam came up just short of the first down there. Doesn't need much. DeAndre Ingram has the first down for Texas, and it's first and goal again for the Longhorns. A good push there on the inside of this offensive line. Cosme gets a nice push. Left guard also, Braun getting a push. This is a big drive for Texas's offense at Tom Herman. And it's lasted forever. This is the 18th play of the drive. In the first half, they had, what, eight tries eight inside tries. the eight-yard line. Came away with no points. Goal line stands early in this game favored LSU's defense. It's really the defensive line getting the penetration. And this is LSU defensive lineman Rashard Lawrence, who's down now. You know, Divinity actually went off the field and then into the locker room. To, we would assume with cramping issues, maybe to get an IV. As we let the LSU staff, Jack Marucci and friends, check on Richard Lawrence, here's what happened in the first quarter when Texas down fourth and goal, same end zone. Yeah, they had a chance here. Fourth down, Ingram, everybody thought he's caught it, touchdown. Obviously, he did not, and then here they are, fourth and goal again. They went with old bread and butter trying to run Ellinger. LSU's defense slanting, expecting that. They got the penetration. Linebackers able to get in and deny him. Just a, a small point. The second opportunity they had down there was set up because of an interception that was a result of the poor field position after they dropped the first touchdown pass. But the point remains, they've been on the doorstep seemingly uh, all night, and they've been unable to cash that one in. Their only touchdown coming on a 55-yard strike from Ellinger to Eagles. You know, I know the fans have, have reacted because they feel like LSU is trying to break the momentum, but it is worth pointing out. It was 100 degrees here today, and it's still 91 uh, in a temperature. You know? I thought it was so 103. It, no, well, right earlier, now you earlier, mean up here? Earlier. Well, it might have been earlier, but right now it's 91. 91. It's, a, it's a brisk 91 here in Austin. <laughs> No, but the, the, the heat, as this game goes on, can you see, see these, both these teams practice in this. You'd right. expect them yeah. to be in shape and ready for this. That, that doesn't look like cramping. No, anymore. it doesn't. It looks like he's 
trying to keep the weight off. He's such a big time player for them on that on that D line. He's had a good night, but he's really trying to keep weight off of his leg there. And Dave Miranda told us this week that Richard's been playing the best football of his career. A senior from Monroe, Louisiana. You know, if you're gonna run Ellinger instead of running him wide against this defense, you I think you got to run right at the defense. Tough to get wide against his speed. Sam's mom, Jenna, making sure everybody's looking for this end zone. Sam Ellinger. Touchdown, Texas. Oh, they looked earlier. They gave him a touchdown and then reviewed it, and they, we called it where his knee was down. They may take a peek at this, but I think he's in the end zone. That's what I said. Run right into the teeth of that LSU defense. Don't go wide. Give him a chance to get penetration. Challenge them and go to your bread and butter. Run that power with the quarterback, which has worked so often. And he clearly gets into the end zone for that touchdown. How many quarterbacks do you know that's going to lower their shoulder and drive through a 345 pound nose guard? <laughs> that's what he just did. Here's the progressive pylon cam. This is what caught him last time. You know, his, his momentum started to go down, and then it looked like his leg drive pushed him before he touched. They are taking a look at this. There's, see, I kind of elevated up. He elevated up as he was going down, and he got the got the, the ball into the end zone. And Sam Ellinger's it. You know, the, as you pointed out, they ruled an earlier one a touchdown. Texas ended up not scoring, but that's just your basic 19 play, 86 yard drive that ate up more than seven minutes on the clock. Got a three and out. Got the ball back to their offense. They're down by 13 and now down six, just the way Tom Herman wanted to start this second half. Back here in Austin, they're feeling much better about life. A 19-play, 86-yard drive, and they're not going to stop believing. They're hoping to send LSU home with an L. And the Bayou Bengals are starting to have a little trouble with health as Grant Delpit cramped up on the touchdown play by Sam Ellinger. And LSU has a lot of concerns on defense in terms of health right now. And they use their offense to hang on to the ball and went three and out with its first drive. Fair catch there. We'll come to the 25. We go to Maria. Well, you said it, Reese. A lot of injuries to update right now. Michael Divinity is still in the locker room. I'm told he's getting an IV for cramping. And you see Del Pitt going off. I also saw him dealing with cramping in that left lower leg. And then also Richard Lawrence was getting his left ankle retaped. We saw him walking off gingerly earlier. All right, Maria. And it's something the Texas coaches told us yesterday. Great respect for the LSU big defensive lineman, but that after five, six plays, sometimes they get a little gas. It's the loudest this stadium has been since the beginning of the game. Well, they were just told to not stop believing, so they're not. <laughs> Flags fly. Left side of that LSU offensive line with that crowd noise. All start. 77. First down. And Sadiq Charles called. We're getting a big and anxious. It'll be first and 15. This is where the student section is. Offensive line is going to have to deal with crowd noise here. See right around that band. It's where it gets really loud. Taking a shot, Chase is out there, and Jamar Chase goes up, and it looks like somebody just got mossed. It was Jalen Green. Well, they took away the crossing route that's been hurting them in the middle of the field. So Burrow, little stutter and go by Chase. It's a matchup he's been winning all night against the young Jalen Green. He gets by him, and he makes a heck of an adjustment on the football. 
41 yard pickup for Chase. Burrow down the middle. And another completion, Terrace Marshall with this one. First down by you, Bengals. I'm, I'm very surprised that Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, keeps leaving these young corners. They've never been in a game like this. I know it's the system, but he's leaving them out on islands, and they're getting exposed. Edward Delaire on the ground, spinning inside the 20 before he's knocked down. Todd Orlando, he, he believes in an aggressive defense, 3-3-5, three, three, likes to give you different looks, loves to trust his corners to be able to hold up in coverage, try to hold up and get pressure. And a hit, a tackle for loss, and a much-needed one as Chris Brown knifed through there and gets Edward Zelaya early. Yeah, they told us Chris Brown, Orlando felt the break in camp. He had had the best camp of the defense, along with Osai. And he said, it's nice to see when guys practice really hard, it pay off for them in games. And Brown had a heck of a week last week and makes a big play here on second down for Texas. Orange bring in fresh troops on the defensive front. Out in the flat, and O'Leary gets drilled as he can't catch it. It'll be fourth down. It's Brown again with the hit. Boy, how about this? He, he lined him up, knew exactly what he needed to do. We just talked about Brown. He's right in the middle of this defense. Watch him line up against the back. He knows he's going. He's going to go out with him. Even if he makes that catch, he's going to put him on his back well short of the first down. So now coming on to try to tack three onto the lead and make it a two-possession game is Cade York. This one is from 40 yards out. The freshman from McKinney, Texas, has made a couple tonight. And LSU has to use a timeout. The LSU defense might not mind getting a little more wet rest while they wait on this field goal attempt. Back in Texas, LSU lining up for a 40-yard field goal attempt that would put them up 23-14. Clutch, one of the nation's top kicking prospects, shows why. Clutch. His third field goal of the night back in his home state, and LSU is up by nine. The much-needed drive after Texas had gotten back in the game and controlled the clock for nearly half the quarter. And now LSU is able to answer and get a score. Monday, the 50th season of Monday Night Football kicks off on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app with our annual Week 1 doubleheader, 7 Eastern. Drew Brees and the Saints. Office might look a lot like what you're seeing from LSU from a scheme standpoint. They take on the Texans, and then it'll be the Raiders minus AB and the Denver Broncos. Monday Night Countdown starts at 5 Eastern time. You know, first Monday Night Football game. September 21st, 1970. Browns beat the Jets back in the day. So we get 50th season this year. How about that drama with A.B.? <laughs> Finally ends, and who comes in to rescue the whole story? But Bill Belichick, who's probably the only one who can save A.B. from himself. And now he gets to go play with Tom Brady. How about that for a reward? Well, I'm going to chaos. I'm going to pat you on the back because you predicted you said that. that yesterday. I know we were could sitting you, in the office like, talking about it. Could you just see him play at New England? It'd be perfect. And sure enough, less than 24 hours later, he's headed to New England. Now, the last drive for Texas was a thing of beauty. It really wore down the LSU defense. And, and it, it got started with the backup running back, Johnson. They started to make some plays. They picked up a few first downs, and then Sam started to get some time to throw. They started to wear down LSU. Johnson finally makes his first catch of the night, and they finish it off after, I think it was, what, 18 plays with a touchdown. And let's see how they get after this tired LSU defense again. 19 play drop. It's a little... Most plays in a drive since 2010 for the Horns. Remember, they started, when you do the math, they started on their own 14. It was a 
clutch big drive. Ellinger going to try to get it a little quicker this time. And he goes down the middle and Johnson has his second catch of the night. You know, LSU a lot of times likes to use outside leverage. Here he's lined up to the inside, but the route, he's, he was able to get to the inside despite that inside leverage from the corner, and they get Johnson a football. You put it on the ground, and there is Rashawn Johnson again. LSU brought pressure, but again, the line, the backs, good shots. Probably the biggest thing, Rashawn Johnson gets in there. You think about him running the ball, but I said, how does he do in pass pro? They, they kind of raised their eyebrows. I said, after two weeks of practice, actually pretty good. Does a pretty good job. We've seen that here tonight. Ellinger, Sam, in the LSU territory inside the 40 and chased out of bounds at the 35. It'll be first and 10 for the Horns. How about how they use Johnson and Brewer stacked to go to your left? Instead, they follow the guard and the tackle the other way. Linebackers, two of them head in a different direction. Well-designed play, kind of a misdirection. And the linebackers read their keys. Those two H-backs, they follow them, and instead he follows the lineman around the right side. Duvernay. Devin Duvernay. Duvernay down to the 20. Man. All over my notes, I have Duvernay at this H. Little Jordan Humphrey into the NFL. They lose size and some power, and they pick up some quickness. <laughs> Duvernay, he's showing you he's not as tall is what we saw last year from Humphrey, but man, he's got some power after the catch. He's found the right spot in this offense, and he's made some big plays, particularly in the second half. Here he comes. He can throw it. He threw it earlier, and he'll decide to keep it himself, and Duvernay, after all of that, got back to the line of scrimmage. Remember, he threw one to Ellinger in the first half. Yeah. Job by LSU having a discipline to take that away. Lyman staying in position, not getting downfield just in case he, he actually wanted to throw it back to the quarterback. LSU took it away. This LSU defense getting its oil checked right now in terms of stamina. Been on the field for most of the third quarter. Good job by Johnson picking up the pressure in the corner to Duvernay. And they couldn't quite connect. And there was the example of Rashawn Johnson, the former quarterback, who understands where the pressure is coming from and where the protection needs to be, of picking up a blitzing linebacker. And he picks up Clark on the blitz, man to man. They go to the inside receiver, Duvernay, who has all that space to the outside, matched up against Vincent as a safety. And Sam had time. They picked the blitz up, just not able to throw it accurately. Down the middle. It's in there and caught for a touchdown. It's Jake Smith, the freshman. Makes a nice block on Chase on over here to the right, trying to get to the outside. He picks him up, comes out here, but you're going to get two vertical receivers down the right side. Watch who they pick on. Trying to find out what this safety wants to do. Is he going to stay wide or is he going to come to the inside to take away Smith? He gives him just enough room to pull in the trigger to the inside to the true freshman. The eyes to move the safety, comes back, throws it on a line. And the body of Smith protects the ball from Harris being able to get around him to it. What concentration by the true freshman. And the Horns, just like that, are in this game and making things really interesting. I'm going to tell you, Ellinger hasn't been his most accurate over the course of the evening. 
but that one, oh. I mean, he, he knocked a net off the edge of a post with that one. That <laughs> hole was tiny, and he put it in there. What a throw. How about the kid holding on to it? The freshman out of Phoenix. And now LSU, it's answered Texas' last touchdown with a field goal drive. It's it back to Joe Burrow. Back-to-back -back drives. Down, you know, at halftime, you're down 20 to 7. Maria talked to Tom Herman, you know, we were saying, boy, what's going on here at home? And, boy, he's got his team ready to play this second half. We got the men's championship at the U.S. Open. Chris Fowler will be there. 2019 U.S. Open presented by Mercedes-Benz. Three-time champ Rafael Nadal taking on Daniil Medvedev. Coverage begins with the men's championship preview show presented by Spectrum at 3 Eastern. Nadal and Medvedev for Eastern on ESPN and, of course, streaming on the app. Edward Zolaire makes the catch with a very short game. B.J. Foster is there. You know, Burrow has thrown a lot of balls downfield and has had a lot of success throwing the ball downfield, whether it's been to the right, the middle, or down the left. He's had opportunities with his receivers left one-on-one -on -one with the corners, and he's hit a lot of them. Burrow approaching a 300-yard passing evening, 280 at the moment, looking at a second and eight. Now Joe's going to run it. He'll be knocked down at the 30. And here's his passing charge. Look at it. Look at the throws downfield, 11 yards or further. Hasn't missed one to the left, to the middle. Just missed the one off to the right. It's been a great night in this new offense for Joe Burrow. And now Texas has him at third down. And a 3D lineman is starting to creep up, bringing maybe some pressure over here. Chase for the first down. What was he, four or five to the left? Now he's five of six. Texas tried to get Chris Brown over there. It's been a long night for young Jalen Green, number three. Chase has gone by him almost any time that he wants. Texas has got to protect him with a safety, or Joe Burrow can go there anytime. Pick up a 26 and now back to the ground. Edward Delaire running tough with a good gain on first down. Uh, Jalen Green is a talented young player, but he's a young, this is his first big game against this kind of defense or this kind of offense and this kind of skill. He's going to be a superstar down the road, but he's getting kind of welcomed to the big time, the big lights and the big stage by this LSU wide receiver core. Texas had to replace cornerbacks this year. Colin Johnson told me during practice that Green had been the best, but the baptism by fire continues for Jalen Green tonight. And the pop into Jefferson, and Jefferson has the first down inside the 30 and down to the 26. And there's the RPO run pass option. Reading here, if he gets involved, you're going to have to throw the football right behind him. Put the ball into the back stomach. He blitzes, balls out quickly. Recognition, comfort, command by Joe Burrow. Well, my friend, I think we've got ourselves a fourth quarter here in Austin. What do you say about it? Do it. 23-21, LSU with the lead and the ball. That's the end of the third. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. The Hubbard here, and let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances, BYU in Tennessee. 20 seconds to go. BYU down three. Zach Wilson to Mike Assignment. A 65-yard connection. That would set up a field goal with five seconds to go. It was good. BYU now just scored first in overtime. This game over on ESPN. Reese Hervey, back to you. Wow. Cassidy, that's, a, that's something in Knoxville again. LSU right now on the move against Texas with a first down at the Longhorn 26. Joe Burrow into the end zone. Touchdown LSU. Terrace Marshall. Keep saying it. Can take it any time they want against the corners. These corners are overmatched against these LSU wide receivers and Joe Burrow. Got a safety 
who gets occupied by Justin Jefferson. It creates a one-on-one -on -one to the outside. And the big, tall Marshall, who's got tremendous upside in a mismatch, this time with Kobe Boyce. Boyce on one side, Green on the other, left on islands against this talented group of receivers. Again, they've been exposed all night. Herbie, that puts Marshall at 100 yards. LSU has two guys with 100 yards receiving. Another catch for Jefferson. It might be three. Bayou Bengals up nine. That's the holy grail for college football teams. The college football playoff national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Monday night, January 13th in New Orleans is when that trophy will be claimed in the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Semifinals in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl pretty early this year on December 28th. Only a couple weeks in, Reese, but can you imagine a quarterback improving any more than Joe Burrow from 2018 to 2019 in this system? Got him back to the gun, got him with what he's comfortable with, and has a great group of receivers. It's a totally different deal with Burrow and the LSU offense. You know, we heard all week about DBU. Texas has kind of started to claim that this year. I didn't really know they were in the discussion. I thought it was more about LSU, Ohio State, Florida maybe, but they've been claiming that. LSU didn't like that. This is in the pregame, the warm-up. They took exception to that. They were fired up and actually rallied them this week and, of course, tonight. And all I know is Joe Burrow's had a pretty good night against this young secondary, 23 of 30, 344 yards, still has almost this entire fourth quarter to go. Joe Burrow has been like the guest professor administering a master class against DBU and so far. But they, look, there have been great defensive backs at Texas, Aaron Ross, Quentin Jammer, Michael Huff. And that's what they, you know, they said they were just paying Honoring tribute. Them. They weren't yeah. trying to take a shot sure. at LSU. And the LSU defensive backs here in the second half have been cut up a little bit by Ellinger and Duvernay and company. I tell you, Duvernay is starting to really have a heck of a football game in a slot making not only catches, but getting valuable yards after the catch with it's kind of a physical style and some toughness. And Kerstetter, who we saw I'll just start. bury. 68, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Caleb Von Chase on in the last drive, got a little anxious that time. This is the second penalty against the Longhorns for 10 yards. It's been a pretty clean game tonight. LSU's only been penalized four times for 35 yards so far. That same look with their two backs to the left, H back and a running back. You know, he's, he ran to his right out of that formation on that last drive. Deontay Ingram is knocked down. Jacoby Stevens making the tackle. You see Grant Delpit stepping in. Maria telling us a few moments ago in the break that Grant got an IV. He's been cramping. Cramped on the touchdown play that Texas had back in the lineup. It's great to see the leader in the back end. Also Michael Divinity, 45, who went in a little earlier with cramps. Nice to see him back as well. Big fourth quarter ahead. Every drive counts. Second down and 13. Ellinger right on the money. It's Duvernay again with his seventh catch of the evening. And he picks up the Texas first down. LSU loves to play man-to-man. -man. They, they love to challenge their receivers. That time, second long, they're playing a little softer. See, the Stingley, the freshman, kind of sinking in coverage. Good call to throw that out into the flat. Give him some room to run after the catch. Ingram looking for running room and not finding any. He'll get nothing. Chase on was the first guy there. Nice. This Chase on is a young man we've talked a lot about tonight. Known really for his ability with quickness to, to rush the quarterback. But that time, I think he's really trying to pride himself on being a complete player. Just got to the outside, kept his outside arm free, set the edge, forced Ingram back to the inside, then got involved in making a tackle. Sean Johnson back at running back alongside Ellinger. Sean has it, a little bit of an alley. Gets away from a tackler, still on his feet, and finally forced out of bounds just inside the 45. Good blocks downfield. Actually, Stevens was able to get off of, like, Leto, who was out there at the tight end. That's what 
made Johnson make that cut. I thought he was going to try to get upfield and pick up the first down. Jason got off the snap quickly on third and two. They took a shot for John Burt. And he was out of bounds when he grabbed it. Burt, the track star, made a great grab but couldn't come down in bounds. So what are you doing here, fourth and, take, and two? And go, how about them going for it? Going for a shot downfield on third down instead of maybe running, you know, the back or running Ellinger, trying to maybe pick up, get a little closer. Instead, they, they try to sneak a one-on-one -on -one matchup down the uh, down the sideline. They, they're going to go for it. I think they have to, down nine into the fourth quarter. That's a long two. They, As maybe three. Maybe maybe it it anyway. You there? Uh, play clock getting down. Ellinger slant. Duvernay first down and touchdown. <laughs> you got a veteran quarterback. You got confidence in him. You're an aggressive head coach. You go for it, and you don't know, ever even question Sam Ellinger. Man to man at LSU. They go to the man who's been making a plays here in this second half. Duvernay gets underneath the coverage, and then this. We've been seeing this breaking those tackles and getting to the end zone. 30 to 28 now. LSU by two. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo. This is a commitment to better banking. This is Wells Fargo. In part by Pacific Life. 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. And the Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. We had a tremendous scene for college game day on the 40 acres LBG lawn this morning and next Saturday for the first time in game day history. We're headed to Ames, Iowa, Iowa State for the Cyhawk. What was that noise I just heard? Is that, is that, is that, a, is that a noise coming out of Ames, Iowa? They've been wanting game day to come there for a long time. Hey, Reese, let's go back to this touchdown and the way it was designed. Kate Brewer, the tight end. It's his fourth down. He does a nice job of almost setting a screen to give Duvernay a chance to get man-to-man. -man. Look how tough this is for Vincent to be able to get around and make a play. He'd like to make the tackle there, but it was very, very hard in man-to-man -man with a big tight end setting that screen, kind of a pick to get underneath. But this is the thing that Duvernay is showing tonight, not just that speed, but being able to pull out of tackles and get more yards. Had a heck of a night. Heck of a second half, Kirk. Seven of his eight catches in the second half. 105 of his 122 yards and a touchdown in the second. And now Burrow has a chance to answer. Burrow to Leonard Fournette. And he's knocked down immediately for no gain. It's Brandon Jones. I'll tell you something. We came into this game expecting a competitive game. We were so excited as a crew to come to Austin, Texas. We've been talking about this game for a long time. And to have it live up to this, Joe Burrow, the way he's played, Sam Ellinger, this is two of the best quarterbacks in the country going toe-to-toe -to -toe and swinging here in the fourth quarter. Burrow took a hit, completed the pass to Jamar Chase, first down LSU. Boy, he did take a hit. He knew it was coming with Osai on the blitz. Stared down the barrel and made the throw. Osai comes around. He comes around. Look, at. he knows it's coming. He knows it's coming, and he's going to take the hit. It's a clean hit. He throws it accurately. Burrow pass deflected, but still caught. A short game for Joe's 25th completion of the night. Notice that Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator from Texas, trying to help his corners. What can he do against these great receivers? He's trying to bring them up tighter. Look at the bottom of the screen. 
You got Green now real tight, trying to make these receivers work to get open. Bringing him. Burrow down the middle, and Thaddeus Moss makes the catch. That was a tremendous grab of an off-target throw. Nice job by Moss. Joe Burrow, the experience of Burrow again coming into play. Watch his eyes. He looks off the safety, knowing he's going to come back and hit Moss over the middle. Burrow taking a shot, looking for Chase, and it's out of bounds. And he got hit at right as he threw it. In fact, there's a flag down in the backfield. Personal foul. Dropping the passer. Number 32 in defense. Using his weight to drive his opponent into the ground. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. An automatic first step. That is Baton Rouge native Malcolm Rhodes, perhaps a little over emotional and overzealous in getting the penalty. Yeah, the last two plays, in fact, he's gotten into the backfield and hit Burrow right after he threw it. That time he gets caught. Well, that's a big penalty. Moves the ball now inside the 25 yard line. Ooh, that's a Thaddeus Moss. That's the previous play. And the, the booth didn't really have time to look at that at all with the tempo of this offense right now. And then the penalty, and now LSU is driving again. Burrow to the outside and going down to the end, and uh, the catch by Terrace Marshall. Dave, you believe, uh, Dave Katai, you believe that Thaddeus Moss's play was a catch? Well, remember now, the ball can hit the ground as long as he doesn't lose control. Back to the ground, Edward Delaire has control of the corner and control the end zone. LSU back in the house. A great offense is answer. That's exactly what LSU has done here in this second half. Just as Sam Ellinger in Texas Dolphins puts him back within striking distance, Burrow comes back. The offense answers. Nice mix of run and pass. And once he got through that initial surge, he bounced it. Nobody left. Those linebackers are blitzing. There's nobody left. He walks into the end zone. These defenses are gassed, and Brady and Ensminger are drinking it up. But <laughs> Flourishing. That was a blink of an eye. What was that, six plays? 75 yards? That is, this is not LSU, man. So much for four corners, melt the clock. No, oh, no, no. They're going down to score. 37-28, Edwards Alaire. Oh, no, don't get too anxious, Clyde. Cassidy Hubbard with a studio update back to Knoxville. Double OT. Tyson Williams gets some help from his friends for the five-yard touchdown. BYU wins. And after losing to Georgia State last week, Tennessee falls to 0-2 for the first time since 1988. Michael Divinity stepping up to provide that leadership. Without Devin White, who's going to step up in a game like this? And defenses need to try to make a stop. You know, here in Austin, Kirk, the All-State bus, helping us keep up with all the mayhem on a busy Saturday. What's your mayhem moment for the well, day? We had some crazy mayhem late throughout this uh, day. There was also some scary moments for Michigan. Army led this game most throughout most of the game, but late in the game, Michigan made the plays that they needed to make. Went into overtime, came up with a sack, and a little surprised by this celebration uh, beating Army. But nonetheless, it was, a, it was a big win. They found a way to come back. But they got a lot of work to do on the offensive line before they worry about Ohio State or anybody else, for that matter. Sam Ellinger got some work to do. Now down by nine. And Sam scrambles and gets forward before Michael Divinity. Well, we've, we've, we've seen these two quarterbacks go back and forth. You can see the second half that Sam has enjoyed. And I, I think it's... Also, the way Tom Herman, Tim Beck have called this second half much more aggressively, a little bit more in attack mode against this man-to-man -man coverage that LSU plays. Pressure coming. Divinity is cut down nicely, but there's other pressure on Ellinger, and Ellinger is knocked down. There's Glenn Logan in there celebrating. Looked like Fajoko was giving part of the pressure, and now Texas, then a third and long. But well, he looked it. 
at Duvernay, but he actually ends up having his tight end here, Brewer, break free here. He's locked into the outside, but if he would have just let this play out, read the coverage, boy, he had a big play there to Brewer, but Duvernay, he's been there so much, I think he, he had a tendency there to maybe just lock in a little early, a little prematurely. He's a huge third down for the Horns. Ellinger going up top and air flags coming and they will deliver Todd Harris just all over Colin Johnson but there's yeah. also a flag in the backfield it's interesting to see what they do here definitely pass interference downfield with Todd Harris grabbed onto the jersey you now initially you could have said what about Johnson a little push off but you can see Todd Harris grab onto He's that jersey. Team on during the play, holding number 52 offense, pass interference, number four the defense. His penalty's offset, third down. All right, Samuel Cosby's played very well, and that is a costly penalty, and that's holding. He right, throws it right down into the left leg of Sam Ellinger. Oh my gosh, is that dangerous? And hopefully Sam's okay. And both of those penalties pretty obvious. Fatigue perhaps setting in on both sides. So it's third down and ten. Ellinger buys a little time. Colin Johnson for the first down. That was a huge, huge throwing catch for the Horn. There's the experience of a quarterback and a wide receiver. When things break down, he starts to take off. And I love to watch as his receiver works to find the opening. Goes back to the sideline, has his head on a swivel to find out where the defender, most dangerous defender is, and works away from him, still knowing where the first down line is. 19 yards. His favorite target. Ellinger stepped up. There's going to be another hold in the back. Ellinger gets the first down and is running inside the 35, but it's going to come back. And Caleb on chase on is slow to get up, and so too is Logan. Kirkstetter held chase on, who's trying to get around the edge. There's two fouls on the offense during the play, holding number 68 and holding number 73 only one will be in force 10 yards first down just tries to tackle chase on leg looked like it kind of buckled there when he's trying to get to the corner and working on the ankle Caleb on hurt an ankle early in fall camp this year we'll check on their status when you come back while in Austin we take a look at our Pacific life game summary how about these quarterbacks? We talked earlier, you hope when you come into a game like this, you get a good matchup, and then you hope that the, the stars play well, and they have done that. Burrow has been magnificent tonight in this new offense, close to 400 yards, and Sam Elliger has continued to bring the horns back after they were down 13 early in the game, and keeps giving them a chance. Ellinger back to work underneath, and Eagles gets away from Divinity, but Divinity held him up long enough to let reinforcements come. Divinity was on the sideline trying to get his team fired up. And, you know, they, they, they've got some injuries. They've got some players down. Divinity was out himself in the locker room, we think, getting an IV because of cramping. But he is now back. Lawrence, one of the leaders up front, is out. You just saw Logan walk off the field. Chase Song has been out. So it's a survival to fittest for this LSU defense and guys like Divinity got to be able to make plays. Delpit missed a little time and he's back out there number seven the All-American that's safety goes to the top of your screen it's outside the 40 here's Ellinger a lot of room for Sam to run if he wants to Ellinger across the 40 and he takes a big hit coming in and knocking him down was Marcel Brooks you had Queen coming from one side and, and Brooks coming in from the other. There's Queen trying to hit him head on. And then eventually Brooks catches up to him. Now they've been hearing about his, how physical the runner he is probably the entire offseason. You know they've heard it all this week. 
his coaches have tried to get this team ready to take on Sam and you've even heard some of their players talking this week coming out of Baton Rouge. I know Chase on was quoted who's from the state of Texas saying you know he's more of a runner than he really is a thrower. So they're trying to take their shots when they can. They converted a third and long last time by getting 19 and they converted it again. It's Duvernay making the grab. Well that scramble in second and forever at least got him to third and manageable or at least they had a chance had enough time to be able to let that route work and Duvernay once again finds the soft spot in that coverage nice big throwing lane in the middle there too for for Ellinger now they're going to look at it again Kirk and see if Duvernay made the catch I say absolutely catch 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 John McDade having a look. After video review, the ruling on the field of a catch for a first down is confirmed. And another third and long converted by Sam Ellinger and the Longhorns with just under six minutes to play, down nine in LSU territory. How's that for a second half? Eight receptions, 117 yards, and a touchdown. And they just keep going back to him. Whether it's a safety, you know, if it's zone, he's finding ways to get open in that slot. We have on Chase on his return for the LSU defense. Ellinger on first down. Has a man out there. Ellinger, and there's going to be pass interference flags coming on Christian Fulton. Well, we keep waiting for Colin Johnson to make plays, but they're just as confident in Brennan Eagles, the sophomore who's 6'4", who has great speed for his size. Fulton's beaten, has to try to grab onto him. Fulton's had a little bit of a rough night himself. Mm -hmm. Had a few pass interference calls. Well, that one might have been the right one. If he didn't do that, it might have might have been touchdown. It's only 15 yards instead. That's right. Part of the adjustment with Duvernay having a big night in the slot is the safeties at times get a double team and can open up some things on the outside for Johnson and Eagles for one on one chances. First and 10 from the LSU 30. the sack but he took it and guess who's there the man who said this is when your defensive legacy is made yep they brought two linebackers right here and then right here to the middle the back Johnson can only pick up one of them Jacob Phillips so it frees up divinity and I think Sam Ellinger expected a guard or a lineman to pick him up but with both backers coming one of them comes free and divinity is able to get there they lost 12 on it. Another LSU player is down. This time, it's Todd Harris, the defensive back. Coach O trying to hang on to this nine-point lead. Boy, stay tuned after this barn burner, except on the West Coast, for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. And be sure to turn to ESPN later for Sports Center for all of the highlights from college football and all of the day in sports. Prominent among those highlights, one would surmise, would be this thing that we have going on right now. Top 10 showdown in Austin. LSU with a 37-28 lead, but the Horns on the move. And now with a long second down to deal with after the sack. Todd Harris, the latest LSU player to apparently deal with cramps. Had a couple of guys go and get IVs. It's been a hot day in Austin, over 100 degrees. And... Still into the 90s, deep into this game. We've seen the defenses get a little gassed, or gassed and gashed as we've gotten deeper into it. And now the LSU defense needs to stand up and see if they can make a stop. And Ellinger needs to make yet another play. He's been doing it all night. Sam going deep again, looking out there for Eagles, and this time Fulton covers him and doesn't 
have yellow laundry to show for it. Well, the difference there is he's in phase. You know, it, when he's been called for pass interference, he's been behind the receiver trying to catch up to him. This time, he doesn't bite on that stuttering go. So you see how he's looking back at the football in phase. He can get away with a little bit of grabbing, a little bit of pushing because he has just as much of a right to the football as the wide receiver. Oh, well, Dave's... Dave's fired up. Okay. Yeah. I'm well, I've been well schooled. <laughs> <I gave. laughs> Third and 22. Quarterback draw. Ellinger trying to get a chunk of it back so fourth down will be more manageable, and he does. I think they're going to have about nine to go for the first down here. Got to kick the field goal. Yeah, it's a one possession. Make it a one possession game. You rely on your kicker who's hit some clutch kicks throughout his 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 young career. Most notable one to beat Oklahoma in the Red River yeah. rivalry game. Played twice last year. This is a 47-yard attempt for Cameron Dicker, a sophomore from Lake Travis High School here in Austin. On the way, one possession game. Under four minutes to go. Horns have all their timeouts, but their defense going to need to slow down LSU, something they haven't done much in the fourth quarter. Aerial coverage tonight, provided by Goodyear from end zone to end zone. Goodyear is more driven. Also, I'd like to remind you to help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Donate now. And certainly, our hearts continue to go out. And if you can, if you can help, we hope that you will. So now, under four minutes to go. Texas defense hasn't done much. What do they need to do? Now, that's a surprise, Texas, for our LSU bringing the hands team out. You got four minutes to go. You got three timeouts. I mean, I know the defense hasn't played great, but you got to kick the ball down the field and hope your defense can, can get them, the LSU offense, off the field. It's been tough to do for them, obviously, from the second quarter on. Gets his hands team. I might just try to pop it down around the 35 and see if he can create a scramble. And Maybe get another member's bounce. Instead, they'll play it safe and hammer it deep. LSU will start on the 25. Joe Burrow has had a just a, a, a career night. Everything you could hope for in this new offense and has been able to anticipate. Look at that ball's in the air. Receiver's still running his round. Ball is out. That, that's where he has been tonight. In rhythm. Even at times when they've challenged him. Look at, look at the accuracy where he's putting this football. And he's playing with a ton of confidence. Recognizes the weakness. Sees that hole. Man to man. Makes a perfect throw. What I want to know is, do you run the ball? Do you work clock? Do you force them to use timeouts? Texas has got to pin their ears and come after Burrow and anticipate the run. They've got to sell out here, which means they've got to leave their corners in man to man coverage, which has been a problem all night. We're approaching a thousand yards of offense here tonight, partner. LSU's at 500. Look at Burrow, look at complete. The Terrace Marshall ball came out. Right yeah. now, line judge coming in and pointing right down. Now. The ruling on the field is a catch by the receiver, and then tackled down by contact prior to the ball becoming loose. He came in right away. By the way, my, my point of, my, look at this, Ellis. I mean, are you kidding me? Are they going to get conservative? Are they going to run the ball? Are they going to make Texas use timeouts instead of come out throwing on the very first play? Uh, the whistle's blowing. I think they want to take a closer look at that. I don't know that I've seen a definitive look. Hey, uh, Tom, Tom, Tom Herman's trying to get a timeout to give them more time to take a peek. Joe Burrow. Trying to go fast. He's he's forcing these officials upstairs to take a look, see if that ball came out. It looked like the back of his arm touched the ground and then the ball came out, which would mean he's down. Yep. And David, runners down right there. Well, that ankle almost looked like the ball was moving first, but what if the contact with the elbow causes the ball to move? That elbow, remember, it's anything other right. than the hand or foot. That elbow puts him down. 
And from what I'm seeing right here, it looks like there's not enough ball movement or anything to show a loss of control before. Let's take a look at this right now. You don't see the ball move it's yet not now, at all. Now it's not moving. Now you got the elbow down and maybe part of the forearm. Now the ball moves. Yeah. I don't see them changing this call. And they called that on the field down. And right, right away, and they jumped in there. And remember, the call on the field is to be presumed right. After video review, the ruling on the field of a catch and then down by rule is confirmed. Confirmed. First down. Confirmed. I think they all saw what we saw. So Tom Herman, in the meantime, burns a timeout. Every time out at this point in the game matters. You can understand him wanting to take the risk, take the chance just in case Joe Burrow was going so fast. Give the replay booth enough time to, to take that extra look. And in the process, he burned that time out. Have a look this. Burrow now with the fourth 400 yard passing game in LSU history. And not all the Longhorns necessarily agreed with that call. I'm just amazed they continue to trust Joe Burrow in this case. You know, you're up by six. You think if you pull out most offensive coaches, the, the playbook with 353, you would think there'd be more of a run game for them. But I, I'm telling you up here, I love it. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but this is LSU we're talking about. The king of conservative. And they're out here throwing it around with Burrow with the lead. I think they've abdicated that throne of being king of conservative. My Tom Herman talking to the officials about I called a timeout. Maybe he's looking for a few more seconds on the game clock. The game clock was erroneously started because of the charge timeout charge to Texas. Yeah. But the game clock operator please put 353 back on the clock. And the clock will correctly start on the snap. Tom Herman's taking it. We're, we're playing here in Austin, fellas. Yeah. Looking up at the boys like, come on, man. Help me out. And what, who he needs help from right now is the defense, which has been filleted by Joe Burrow, particularly here in the second half. Really started in the second quarter and hasn't let up much. Look at those eyes. complete it's Jefferson and that will be another milestone for LSU for the first time in school history they have three 100 yard receivers in a single game incredible the way he's spreading this out like I said composure command you're gonna have to tighten up these these this coverage take away those throws Edward Delaire Dancing and getting up and moving the chains and moving that clock. Let's see Joe Burrow. There's his mom saying it's a first down. Dad off there to mom's left, our right. He, he, Joe told me this week, he said, my dad said, you know, as a player or a coach, first time in 50 years that I'm doing this, just being a fan, watching football as opposed to playing or coaching. Joe's going to work this play clock down. But if you're Texas, no more cushion. Don't give e those easy access throws. Tighten things up. There you go right there. Take those away. There they go. And Jimmy Burrow's finding out how agonizing it is to be a fan sometimes. Joe going up top. And he's complete tight coverage clock stop. It's, that's exactly right. If you give, if you're soft, Joe's a veteran. He's going to see it. He'll just take that quick throw. It's a, it's like an extension of their running game. It's a gain of five. Clock keeps moving. You got to use a timeout. It's, it's high risk, high reward. You tighten up. They might beat you over your head, but that's the chance you got to take with 2:43 to go. Don't give those easy throws away. Tighten things up and, and challenge those wide receivers. It's worth the risk. That snapped the streak of 11 straight completions for Burrow. I still just can't believe they're throwing them all downfield. Here comes Pete. Burrow getting pressure and Burrow sacked. Brandon Jones, the secondary leader, came off the corner. Now it's third and long. Interesting here, Reeves. I want you to watch the, the offensive line, including the tight end Moss. They're going to slide this way. The blitz comes from here. Nobody picks up the blitzer. They're sliding to their left. Nobody there to account for him, even the running back. Tight end and running.
running back are on that side. They work to the left. Nobody picks up the blitzing safety, the veteran Brandon Jones, and that's exactly what Texas needed. He needed it desperately, and they called the timeout. A third and 17 coming up for this crowd when the timeout is over. And Burrow gets that offense up there, and that defense is getting revved up. You're going to see the new Texas atmosphere here. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up coming up immediately after the game with Cassidy Hubbard when we wrap up here. Matthew McConaughey fired up. LSU has been throwing. They've been aggressive. Texas down to their last timeout. It's third and 17. Don't you think you got to run it here? Use that last timeout. Third and 17 is a hard ask. If you do, you still give them two minutes, but no timeouts. You do have a veteran in Ellinger running the offense. But first, what can Burrow do with his third and long? Oh, to the middle. Complete to Jefferson. First down on his way. And that might be the knockout punch. at LSU. You know, even me up here, I'm thinking, you got the lead, run the ball, make them use that last time out, but this is, the two, this is 2019 LSU. This is Joe Burrow. Forget that. We're here to win. We're here to play for championships, and wait until you see him maneuver and work his way around that pocket and make that throw. The linebackers are coming. They're trying to bring the pressure here and here. Watch Joe Burrow work his way, navigate his way, and throw it right in the face of another blitzing safety, Chris Brown. And then there's Justin Jefferson doing what he does after the catch. He's had a huge night himself. But this is incredible. Look at the ball position. Two hands on the ball, protecting it. An accurate throw, third and 17. Just amazing to see Joe Burrow working tonight. From a philosophical standpoint, Kirk, the other thing a lot of this philosophy is that Ed Ogeron has embraced, it's analytics driven. You can't play conservatively. You milk the clock, kick it to him. You don't give him a chance like that. I'm not, I'm not sure that Jimmy Burrow and his 50 years in that Nebraska system in Ohio, you and Frank Solich would be on board. And, uh, Matthew McConaughey, and I think a lot of Texas fans, at some point, if LSU beats you the way they played tonight, you just kind of step back and tip your cap to what they've done. On the road, playing the way they have, and they're going to go for two here. Make it a 14-point game if if they can. And Texas with a timeout and just under two and a half to go. Once they get it back, we'll see if Pearl can stretch the lead to 14. And the end zone, and it's good. Jamar Chase and the lead. Jefferson is able to work his way from the inside right here and works across. You have a, a post behind it, but really, Texas ends up playing man-to-man. -man. They roll the dice. If they're going to throw it, we're going to go do what we do best, which is blitz and play man-to-man. -man. What they anticipated was that the blitz would get there. You don't want to leave Justin Jefferson one-on-one -on -one with Cade Stearns in man coverage because you're not going to win that. Justin Jefferson, nine receptions, 163 yards on a night, and three touchdowns. He's wired different, man. Yeah. He's just wired a little different. He, he's been a terrific leader. Ogeron calls him a game changer. And he's got a little ornery streak to him there. He's waving goodbye to yeah. the crowd. And I don't know if he needs to do all that. I think he just, he's had a perfect night. Just focus and execute and walk out of here as a class act and, what he, and really what he is. But his team loves him. They want to play for him. This is a dangerous LSU team in the SEC this year. Uh, we're coming down to the final two and a half. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. 
Clemson with a solid win. I think LSU is going to make a. They, everybody won. I understand that. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I move him up a little. When you go on the road and, and win a game like this, they end up winning it. Go on the road and win like this, you obviously should be rewarded. And we really haven't seen some of the teams that are up ahead of them just haven't seen them play anybody yet. Not to say that they should be penalized. It's really more about LSU being rewarded. Ellinger is sacked. Chris Felica mentioned on College Game Day this morning that against top 10 teams not named Alabama, Coach O had had great success. And if they can hang on to this 14-point lead for the last two and change, Ed Ogeron will move to 6-0. If LSU against top 10 teams not named Alabama. Ellinger gets the first down and keeps a little bit of hope alive for the Horns. And we, we, you know, not to, to just continue to bring this up over and over, but this is all the way back to 2012. They've averaged, think of that, 2012, 25 points a game. You're used to seeing them being ultra conservative. It's frustrated their own fan base. And it frustrated Coach O enough for him to go to the Saints and talk to Joe Brady to come over and help them learn about the spread, learn about getting their receivers out, getting their speed in space, and getting Joe Burrow in a more comfortable position to attack. Not just, let, let's play it safe, let's attack, which is exactly what we've seen tonight for 60 minutes from this offense. Where are you going to rank them this week? I'd have to put them in a top, top two, top two or three. I mean, it's just, they deserve it. They, I mean, maybe, maybe, I, would you put them ahead of Alabama? Would you put them ahead of Ohio State? I, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at what other teams did, but well, no one has a more impressive win. I and wouldn't and say if they end up winning 45 to 31, it's not just that you know the, the the winning the game. It's how they've had to continue to fight back on the road in this environment against a really good quarterback and a really good offense. I mean, they you could there are a lot you could make a strong case for putting them at number one. I, I don't disagree. I think they might wind up there. Tomorrow night, Sunday night baseball crew will be at Fenway Park in Boston for the season's final series between the American League East leading New York Yankees and the Red Sox. Coverage starts baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Then the Yankees and Red Sox at 8. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. It's an interesting thought. I mean, you know, these polls so often they're about what happened last year yeah. and how the season ended last year and to me it's about this year and, and what did they do in their I know they didn't play anybody in their first game Georgia Southern 55 mm -hmm. to 3 but I, I don't some teams play teams like that and they just do enough to get through and it's not always pretty I vote in the AP poll and early you, in the you season put and it's very I try to move teams around I'm not sure yet. I'm going to consider one or two. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to be at, at worst. I'm going to have them number three. I think right now and I, I might have them one or two. I, the question I, it comes down to though is you don't want to overreact to one game. No, Do I think they're better than Clemson right now. I can't say that. But so to me, it's probably not one. Yeah, it's it, it should be a fluid situation. Agreed. And Especially early. I think Dabo Swinney would be the first one to tell you that his team is capable of playing much much better than they've looked in their first couple of games now you brought up the point the game against texas a&m today a team that, that i also think highly of and had them ranked very highly it, it never felt like at any point that a&m had a chance to win that game no texas has had chances tonight they've come close and they're still hanging around and trying to make one more big play and Ellinger makes another one okay. and it's Brandon eagles hey look there's still just over a minute to go you get a quick touchdown you get a chance at an onside kick well you wouldn't expect 11 to go away nope. you know he's just going to keep fighting to the last whistle very similar approach that joe burrow has as far as his competitive spirit and you're right i mean if you can punch one in and still have an onside kick Ellinger is approaching a 400-yard passing night as well. And Ellinger will pull it down and head to the sidelines, get out of bounds, and stop the clock, chased down by Jacoby Stevens. Yeah, good decision. He looked like he was heading up to the middle of the field and saw that defense and did a good job getting out of bounds to stop that clock, save that one last timeout that they have. 
You know, Duvernay's had chances to make a lot of plays, but down in the red area, once they get down close to the end zone, you start to look for the, the length of Eagles 13 at 6'4", and Colin Johnson, number nine, at 6'6". Six, six. We got big Malcolm Epps in there, too. He's, he's also 6'6", six, six, number 85. The inside the Steve at the bottom of the screen. Ellinger to get rid of it. Duvernay another catch. Stop short of the first down. See LSU will take that all day. Yep. Tackle him short of the first down. Middle of the field. They're giving that up all day. Let that clock keep moving. Texas still with one timeout in his pocket, hoping to be able to hold that one. Duvernay to get the first down and get out of bounds, and he does. Yeah, it looks like a holding call right in front of where he, he was trying to get around. Stingley could not get away from the Texas oh, wide receiver. Number 13, offense. Eagles. Tenure penalty, third down. Well, the Eagles has had five catches for 116 yards and touchdown tonight. Call for the hold. This is a really, really good Texas team, too. They've, they've fought valiantly. They, they've a little thin in some spots, most notably at running back, some spots on defense, too. This yeah. is a good team. They're going to have to get better at corner before they get ready down the road for Jalen Hurts and Lincoln Riley. But this is a good team. This could be a very competitive team. You know, that whole Texas is back. They're not back. This is a good football team that still has a lot to accomplish in 2019. 38 seconds. Texas fight still showing. The time is dwindling away and the mountain is steep. Ellinger throwing to the end zone. Colin Johnson, every pass interference. Uh, he got behind Todd Harris, and Todd Harris said, I'm just going to tackle you. He's not going to give up the touchdown. Uh, it's, a, it's a smart play. Yeah. Again. Yeah. I mean, in, in the NFL, it's at the, one, the ball's at the one-yard line. Yeah. And, and here, you're going you're gonna to give up some yards. But Harris, you can see, he just went airborne. See how Johnson got behind him? If he doesn't do that, it's a touchdown. Good adjustment by Colin Johnson working to get behind Todd Harris. So Texas picks up this first down. They'll move the ball to the 15 now. You, know, you never want to do something that you don't practice, but in theory, you could just tackle the receivers until the clock keeps winding down and run them out of time. So if you're going to give up a quick touchdown, you might as well do what Todd Harris did. Into the end zone, and a quick touchdown is there, and it is Duvernay. And Texas, maybe just the slightest of hope, but there's still breath. They'll get it to a seven-point game with the extra point and then a chance for the onside kick. And heck of a throw over the linebackers and between the safeties. That's the weakness of that coverage with the two-high safety look. Cover two, tries to move that safety and then throws an absolute rope to Duvernay, who's had a best night of his career. Ellinger with that touchdown pass, his fourth of the night, goes over 400 yards himself, and it's 45 to 38. Later tonight on ESPN, after Stanford and USC, stay tuned for Sports Center. Stan Brett and Zubin Mahenzi, and all the coverage of Antonio Brown being released by Oakland and is predicted by Kirk Herbstreit, signed by the New England Patriots. Kirk's going to join the show. We'll talk about the reactions to this game and the whole day in college football. Serena Williams uh, lost at the U.S. Open. And we'll check out that, and they'll have reaction for that on Sports Center after football on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Comes down to the onside kick, 22 seconds. If they were to recover it, still have the one timeout. So it's about recovering the onside kick, which is always tough. But if they do, it's not just throw the Hail Mary. But, you know, you might have about 20 seconds left, plenty of time to try to hit a crossing route or something to get you down inside the 30 or inside the 20. And then you take a shot or two to the end zone. But first things first, they've got to try to get on top of this onside kick. And because of the rules that have been adjusted over the last few years in the, with the idea of player safety in terms of how you're able to hit and block the receiving team, recovering the onside kick has become even more difficult than it already was. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. Texas is going to try to keep on living with this onside kick. The big hop, it's loose, it's loose, and Texas, if they controlled it, if they controlled it before it went out of bounds, and now it looks like LSU. Well, 
Colin Johnson oh my goodness. went airborne to come up with it. And just, I don't think he was able to hold on to the football. Boy, oh boy. And that's the guy, That's if there's a guy you want to try to extend to catch it, it's Colin Johnson. Never had possession of the football. A few got blocked on the sideline. He was, what a shot he had at. Oh, my goodness. Takes a perfect bounce, goes somehow just right through all the LSU players, but he never yeah, seen the ball on the ground. Control. Never yeah. had it. The ruling on the field is that the first and only touch of the ball was by the kickers legally after the ball went 10 yards. However, he failed to secure it before it going out of bounds. This is a kick out of bounds. Five yard penalty from the ball went out of bounds. Hey. First down, receiving team. If he's able to hold oh. on to that, watch him go airborne. They have the ball at the 47-yard line with 20 seconds left in a timeout. And that's the guy. That's exactly how you draw it up. Great job by the kicker. Snuck it through LSU, and there's your best receiver with the best hands laying out, just unable to hold on to it. That is the kind of thing that absolutely is agonizing for a player of his caliber just right there. He, he landed in bounds and he just been able to secure it. it. I mean, there was no question that he was in bounds when he hit the ground and these two warriors meet. I, I've called the mirror images and they are and they both were valiant. There's play. Tom Herman who yep. recruited Joe Burrow to Ohio State. Great respect and admiration for one another. And I know it's great for Tom Herman's sad to lose, but incredibly happy for Joe Burrow and the way his career has turned out and what he has in front of him this year with this offense and his football team. Do you think that talent would find its way out anyway, but Burrow isn't sure he'd be playing college football at this level, if not for Tom Herman recruiting him, but it is Ed Ogeron getting the big victory tonight. He's with Maria. All right, coach, you guys hung on for the win, but I want to take you back to third and 17. You put yep. the ball in Joe Burrow's hand and you threw a touchdown strike. You know, Describe we, the decision to attack. We trust him. You know, we talked about going four minutes. Steve thought we could move the ball. We're to put the ball in our quarterback's hands. He got the job done. I have to give credit to Texas. They played one heck of a ball game. Over 470 yards passing out of this offense. What impressed you most about the air game? I do believe that the way we protect the quarterback, the way we throw the football, the game planned by Steve S. Megan, the Coleman, by him and Joe Brady, outstanding, and you got to give the credit to our players that won the game. All right, talk to me about the statement that was made by this team coming on the road in a top 10 matchup and walking away with the win. Well, I think it's a big statement, but obviously we wanted to play better. We didn't play good enough on defense to get where we want to go, so we have, we have some getting better to do. We'll start next week. All right, thanks for your time, Coach, and, and we just have Joe Burrow joining us, too. All right, let's talk about this passing game and describe the difference that you feel being on this field and the ability to have three receivers with 100 cards receiving in one game. Yeah, it's big time for us, uh, but I want to give a shout out to the O-line that battled all night. You know, Texas was blitzing us, um, playing cover one in the second half, and our O-line stepped up with a challenge, as well as our backs and pass protection. I saw a long embrace with you and Coach Herman over there. What was the message that you wanted to send to him? Just that we love each other. You know, we have so much respect for each other. Um, we stay in contact. Uh, it was great to get to compete against him, and, and I just love that guy. All right, thanks for your time, Joe. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks. And Joe, Maria, thank you very much. What, what an entertaining game. What a performance by Joe Burrow and by that man, Sam Elliger. Final score from Austin, LSU 45, Texas 38. Bill Bunnell's our producer. Jeff Evers, our director. They did a fabulous job. Our entire crew did. Reminder, Stanford and SC over on ESPN. And next week, Saturday Night Football in Syracuse for Clemson and the Orange, 730 Eastern on ABC. For Maria and Kirk, I'm Reese. Now it's time for the Ford wrap-up. Let's go to Cassidy Hubbard. What a battle there in Austin. Welcome to the Ford Wrap-Up. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Now in the other ranked matchup of the day, number 12 Texas A&M came in with a lot of confidence against top-ranked Clemson. Offensive lineman Jared Hawker even promised an upset. But those talks died quickly in Death Valley as the Tigers made their statement 
on the field. And Trevor Lawrence also hushed the combo about his so-so week one performance with this beauty of a passing TD. He also ran for one as Clemson got their 17th straight win, tying a school record 24-10 the final. Now the top five teams in the country all took care of business in week two. Bama, Georgia, and Oklahoma all scoring more than 60 points while Ohio State shut out in-state foe Cincinnati. Number seven, Michigan was in a nail-biter against Army. Double overtime Army's Kelvin Hopkins Jr. sacked. Fumbles recovered by Michigan, and the Wolverines survived. Barely 24-21, the final score there. Meanwhile, number 25,